I played like two levels of this, and then my recording got corrupted. I feel mentally invigorated. You feel mentally reinvigorated. <laughs> Prepare. It's all it's I didn't so even fine. see this the first time. And it's not out of the question well, that months. you might have a very minor case of serious brain damage. Serious. But don't be alarmed, all right? Uh, although if you do, if you do feel alarmed, try to hold on to that feeling because that is the proper reaction to being told that you've got brain damage. Do you understand what I'm saying? At all? Does any of this make any sense? Just tell me, just say yes. Probably in no fit state to run this particular type of cognitive gauntlet. But, um, I got at this. least you're a good jumper. So, you got that. Got I, am, on your side. I am a good jumper. Um, just do your best. Difficulties due to circumstances of potentially apocalyptic significance. That's These pre recorded crazy messages that they will provide this. instructional and motivational support so that science can still be done even in the event of environmental, social, economic, or structural collapse. Enough time has passed to where there's been all this degradation and nature has reclaimed the place, but we aren't dead. Which is like, you can only keep people alive for so long chemically. We weren't in cryosleep. We were just asleep somehow. We were sedated. Test the incandescent particle uh. field across the exit. This aperture science material emancipation grill will vaporize any unauthorized equipment that passes Damn through. It. it looks different. I like the look of the older one better with like the actual particles flying by. This one just looks like a basic little texture map or whatever. May have emancipated the ear tubes inside your head. The ear snails. So this is all really similar to like the first test chamber or like the second test chamber that we did in 401. But it's just like a different sort of layout. So I'm assuming like in the time that I was asleep, they changed it up a little bit, but it's the same general, general idea. And look, the cameras are stationary. They're not pointing at me. They're just pointing down. This guy comes through, takes over at the like, they're, they're worshiping him. Political, this is some uh, UN meeting or something with all the country flags. Same. I can't see it though. Same test Maybe chamber. Maybe off. Same Do you want to go quick look? Same test chamber, same camera placement. But, it's um, alright, no, go on, just have a look about. This guy's so fucking annoying, dude. No, that's right. Over by the podium, yeah. I didn't see these up here. I saw these drawings. So, this is like the scientists with GLaDOS being killed by the deadly neurotoxin. I'm assuming that this is the guy drawing this stuff. Right, he's a good artist, man. He drew the cube right. This right here is me with my leg things, and this is GLaDOS offering me cake. Really, like, well-made drawings, and then that's him with the cube. I drop my portal gun and he takes it or something, and this is me. I'm assuming, like, asleep. I would say this is creepy to, like, draw someone while they're asleep, but there's a lot of creepier things in this game. This is actually quite flattering. So yeah, we're already off course. We're not going through the same test chambers again. Rest assured that all lethal military, military androids, androids have been taught to read and provided with one copy of the laws of robots to share. Good. To if share. you feel that a lethal military android has not respected your rights as detailed in the laws of robotics, please note it on your self-reporting form. A future Aperture Science Entitlement Associate will initiate the appropriate grievance filing paperwork. Entitlement Associate. That's hilarious. Speed run. Let's fucking go. This was, yeah, this was like the other test. Great work. Speed run straps. Because this on reason. There's a cat jumping over the moon. Was it a cat jumping over the moon or was it the dog jumps over the moon? Or maybe it was a cow that jumped over the moon. There's like another cat thing right here. There's like a little paw. Is this Schrodinger's equation? That would make sense because Schrodinger's cat. There's another cat right here. There's a little companion cube as a cat. Dude, these sound effects are like really, really on point, dude. They did a good job with this. Oh man, amazing sound effects. And although circumstances may appear bleak, you are not alone. All Aperture Science personality constructs will remain functional in apocalyptic, low power environments of as few as 1.1 volts. I like this new guy, I like his... I don't think he's sentient the way that GLaDOS is, but I like the sense of humor they put into him. GLaDOS is also supposed to still be alive, I'm assuming, since she this said next the last test game. applies the principles of momentum to movement through portals. If the Sounds laws of good. physics no longer apply in the future, God help you. I mean, really, that's all you can say. God help you, straight up. Good work getting this far, What the? Starter. You did find a portal gun! I did. Oh, the, do you know what? It just goes to show, people with brain damage are the real heroes in the end, aren't they, at the end of the day? Uh, Brave. Come on, friend. I guess. Let's uh, go on one this time. Okay. Okay, ready? 
One. Catch me, catch me. What the? Oh. Oh, okay. Yeah, I can't do it if you're watching. Seriously, I'm not. I'm not joking. Could you just turn around for a second? <laughs> the way they spun him like that. I can't. I can't do it if you're watching. <laughs> if you. All right, you can turn around now. Ah. Oh no. Yes. Hello. No, we're not stopping. Don't make eye contact. Whatever you do. No. Thanks. Very good. Appreciate it. Keep it's moving. Like, keep moving. It's like driving by a homeless person asking you for money. Oh, don't make eye contact. Just keep going. I'm taking her down in the end. You're not going to believe this. A human. I know. I know. I wouldn't yeah, believe either. Apparently, this human escaped, and uh, nobody's seen him since. Then there was a sort of yeah. long chunk of time. By extension, me. So do do really make sure you keep a grip on me. Also, I got you. I ah! Oh, still held. Oh. Let there be light. That's uh, God. It's quoting God. Quoting God. It's, it's moving up. Okay. Okay. No, don't, don't worry. Don't worry. I've got, it, I've, got it, I've got it. I've got it. You should slow it down. No, it makes it go faster. Okay. Uh oh. Power up initiated. A A A A A. Um. A A A A A. C. Oh, what happened to B? Hey, my portal gun. But I think Damn. put our differences behind us. Did she just kill Besides, him? Besides, that since you went to all the trouble of waking me up, you must really, really love to test. I love it too. That is one of the questions that I had in the previous game, which is like, why was she doing this? And it seems like she just has a, a compulsion to test. But then why did she kill me at the end instead of making me test more? She sounds... Oh, don't worry, buddy, I got you. She sounds so disheartened. Oh shit! Why? Wait, so there were- there's multiple portal guns. Do you know the biggest lesson I learned from what you did? I discovered I have a sort of black box quick save feature. In the event of a catastrophic failure, the last two minutes of my life are preserved for analysis. I was able, well, forced really, to relive you killing me again and again, forever. After all, we've got a lot to do, and only 60 more years to do it. More or less. I don't have the actuarial tables in front of me. So I'm like 24 or 26, something like that in the game. Sick. She said she learned a lesson. That, that, no, that would teach you lessons, but that's not like a, damn, that's torture. How long have we been asleep for? Being forced to rewatch that for all that time? Ayo, hey, and now the camera's pointed at me again. And now I'm on to all your little tricks. So there's nothing to stop us from testing for the rest of your life. So here's what's gonna happen. We, we're not gonna test for 60 years, more or less. We're gonna find, because you know the place is degraded, we're gonna find some cracks in the system and we're gonna use that to escape. It's not really a deadly laser if I can go through it, you know? Not bad. I forgot how good you are at this. Yep. Holding them before you had your, well, episode, how e they were. Episode? I was defending myself. There should be one in the... Dude, that's such a sick sound effect. Here come the test results. You are a horrible person. That's what it says. A horrible person. We weren't even testing for that. <laughs> Dude, she, she's so petty. I mean, I'm petty for doing all this shit, but... If it makes you feel any better, science has now validated your birth mother's decision to abandon you on a doorstep. Damn. Yeah, you can't really... I don't see many people making jokes like that in games nowadays. Wait a second. Suckers, luck, exile. Too many variables. What's the symbolism here? I'm not getting it. I'm lost. Most people emerge from suspension terribly undernourished. I want to congratulate you on beating the odds and somehow managing to pack on a few pounds. She just called me fat? Like, it's... I am well nourished, that's a good thing. But I'm not fat. Dude, I don't ever get offended at weight jokes. I'm imagining I'm this girl in this game and I'm getting offended. I'm like getting so into the role. Ooh, let's, damn it. You guys are hearing this, right? The music is in proximity to that thing. Like the closer you are to that, is there like a radio or something up, up there? Literally, this whole test was done without any portals. Fun soaring through the air without a care in the world. I have to move the wing that was made entirely of glass and pick up 15 acres of broken glass by myself. 
That's not my fault. The music is like proximity based. It's like if you get close to things. See that? You don't have to test with the garbage. It's garbage. Music disc. Maybe that'll be useful at some point. That's why I had to call you garbage a second time just now. Hey, one man's trash, you know? It's not the same. I fizzled that one too. I'm done with her, dude. I'm oh, done well. with her. This fucking bitch, dude. You can call me fat and all this shit, but it's like, she's not stupid. She knows that the companion cube is like the only kind of companion you get in here. Hmm. There's no, the thing's glitching out. I just want to actually jump again. Oh. Wait, what if I could just put it, like, right in the corner? Oh, shit! I think I can reach that. Yes! With an emancipation grill at its exit, so that test subjects cannot smuggle test objects out of the test area. This one is broken. <laughs> Don't take anything with you. Oh, wait, we could have... I'm such a fucking idiot. All right. I think that one was about to say, I love you. And they are sentient, of course. We just have a lot of them. That wasn't even a satisfying puzzle. I'm not even trying to like, I just wanted a little bit of catharsis. I wanted a little bit of like, like, oh, a glimmer of hope in this like, depressing, desolate, whatever. I, I hope the game gets to the good part soon, you know? It must not be calibrated to someone of your generousness. Fuck I'll you add a few zeros that? to the maximum weight. Oh. You look great, by the way. Very healthy. I am. I, know. I am healthy. Few zeros? Fuck you think I am, Lizzo? On fucking point, dude. Look at you, sailing through the air majestically. Like an eagle, piloting a blimp. Haha, <laughs> it's robots don't have an understanding of what makes eagles majestic. Maybe I'll let you ride an elevator all the way up to the break room. And I'll tell you about the time I saw a deer again. Yeah, or like that. Like, robots don't have any understanding of what makes humans genuinely tick. Like seeing a deer, not hearing about the hedonic adaptation of these kind of things like that would not apply to robots. And that kind of humor, it's like so deeply understandable. It's great. I love it. Whoa, he's smooth with it. Oh. I could have just... My way is cooler. Dude. First of all, these colors are beautiful. Second of all, the music is coming from the laser. And then, if I... So that music is off, right? Now listen, listen. You hear that sound? And it stays on with the proximity. Oh man. Wow. That's genius. That's genius. The stems. Okay, so it's like the soundtrack is going to consist of like... 20 layers, 20 tracks, whatever. And stems are turned on and off based on the conditions like the laser will be pointed at the thing. Different music? That's genius! Oh, this game did music right. This is the, this is perfect music for Portal, perfect. Yeah, I was wondering how this place got powered. I guess it's solar then. Oh, look. It has an end, the hard light bridge. You're a predator, and these tests are your prey. Speaking of which, I was researching what sharks for an upcoming test. Nobody but you is that pointlessly cruel. I... When you die, I'm going to laminate your skeleton and pose you in the lobby. That way future generations can learn from you how not to have your unfortunate bone structure. I mean, yeah, good for them. I hope they learn from that. But, uh, you threw me in an incinerator twice. That's not helping me. Oh, uh, turn red. Let's go. I'll be right back. Don't touch anything. Damn, that means we could touch something. That means we should, we should, uh, there hey, should be something. Hey. Up here! Oh! I found some bird eggs up here. Just dropped me into the door mechanism. Yeah, take a take a look, good look at your buddy. Mwah. Hey. 
speed run. Check me out, bro. I'm so good at this game. Oh no! Oh, oh. I almost dropped the cube in the wrong place. Um. Oh shit. Dude, that was real clutch what I just did just now. Okay, yeah, I, I don't I don't think it'll work with anything other than the cube. Oh shit, look at that! The cube doesn't even work with those. I guess the cube has to be touching the button then. Well, I've been working on a belated birthday present for you. Well, more of a belated birthday medical procedure. That jumpsuit you're wearing looks stupid. That's not me talking. It's right here in your file. On other people it looks fine. But right here a scientist has noted that on you it looks stupid. Well, what does a neck bearded old engineer know about fashion? He probably... Oh, wait. It's a she. Still, what does she know? Oh wait, it says she has a medical degree. In fashion. Oh. From France. I don't even know what to think about GLaDOS anymore, dude. Oh, I can knock him over. I, uh... Okay. Oh, shit. I don't think it was necessary at all to take him down, but fuck it. Let's just knock him over. <laughs> Try that again. Wait. I wonder if I soft lock if I just shoot a boot portal. Oops. You trapped yourself. I guess that's it then. Thanks for testing. You may as well lie down and get acclimated to the being dead position. What? I'm kidding. Not about you trapping yourself though. That really happened. Here, I'll lower the glass. Go on. Finish the test. What if I do that again? Okay, she's just gonna, yeah. This is super interesting. This is like Call of Duty gun skins, right? And then this is like you prestige. So this is like the prestige and then all these skins are like, you gotta get like 50 or like 500 headshots to get like this skin right here or something like that. Knocked off the whole vent. Hey, this is intentional. It's supposed to go back here. Where am I going? Is, is music like a thematic element of this game or something? Like, should I be paying attention to the music? Because it was not like this in Portal 1. Look at that one. That one's, that one's got the... Look at the way he's moving. He's like... That's what he's doing. On... On morality. What I want to know is like... She's singing! She was singing along! GLaDOS is enjoying herself. She's recovering. So what we gotta do is we gotta block the laser, then remove the laser, and then we gotta put the cube on here. And we gotta be on that thing when we're doing it. Oh my god. I can't believe that worked. Alright, I think I got this. I think I got this. Do that. I bet you think <laughs> I forgot about your surprise. That was not the intentional way to do it. I have no clue how you do it intentionally. I don't think I'd be able to figure it out. I made it all up. Surprise. Oh, come on. If it makes you feel any better, they abandoned you at birth. So I very seriously doubt they'd even want to see you. I think we broke her, dude. I think we broke GLaDOS. Ooh, what fucking fashion degree dumbass fucking... I don't look bad, I don't look fat or nothing. I look kind of hot in this jumpsuit, actually. That's interesting, these things make music. So it's off, and then... Yes, Jerry, or maybe your prejudiced work site should have accommodated a nanobot of my size. Thanks for the hate crime, Jerry. <laughs> See you in court, mate. Anyway, look, just hang in there. That's for, hilarious. For more Bro, well, the speed run this you bitch. know the old formula. Comedy equals tragedy plus time. Can't argue with that. I got another one I was thinking about. Happiness equals luck minus intelligence. Wait, which portal do I put right there? Orange. Oh, I'm an idiot. Wait, I could have put either because it has the same amount of momentum going forwards and backwards. I have to give it an orange portal if it's over here. I have to give it a blue portal if it's, if it's up here. Sing. Oh, there it is. Damn it, let's try that again. I love the way this game handles music. That's so genius. I don't know why more games don't do that. Have the stems come from like different levels of proximity to different objects in the game with different kinds of conditions. And like as you progress, you can give your like composer like, 
okay, so when they progress, this condition will be on, and this condition will be on when they progress, progress more. And they can make more and more, like, uplifting or whatever music, like, thematic music based on what's going on in the game. It's so genius, dude. Federal regulations require me to warn you that this next test chamber is looking pretty good. Federal regulations. That's right. This does look pretty good. And it's clean, too, for the most part. Not really a hair out of place as far as I can tell. Sure would be a shame if someone were to fucking destroy it. Uh, dude, that's amazing. You gotta play this game with headphones. It's missing. It's missing a third of the noises. And then I add this. Dude, I'm hearing melodies everywhere. Now I hear melodies in the water. I'm hearing a subtle melody when I shoot the gun. Everything in this game, man. You could give speedrunners or like tassers the ability to like make fucking works of art just through the sound design of this game. We're gonna shut down her turret production line, or I turn off her neurotoxin and then confront her. Good plan. Whoa, why are we confronting her? Why don't we just leave? Why don't we just escape? You are almost at the last test. Here it is. Why don't you just do it? Trust me. It's an easier way out than <laughs> test is done. Line a heart? Came up with. That's funny. Oh, There's a deer. You probably can't see it. Uh, I'm Get not closer. I'm not falling for it. I'm not falling for it. They told me that if I ever turned this flashlight on, I would die. They told me that about everything. I mean I, I don't even know why they bothered giving me this stuff if they didn't want me to use it. It's pointless. Yeah, that's, that's a, you make a good point. Dude, everything in this whole game looks oh, the same. Like the radio looks like the turret, which looks like the portal gun. I almost got a job down here in manufacturing, but uh, guess who the foreman went with? Only an exact duplicate of himself, nepotism. <laughs> nepotism? Ended up giving me the worst possible job, tending to all the smelly humans. The, the, um, sorry, that's a no. This guy's racist. That's funny that robot nepotism is just making you clone yourself and hiring it. I'll tell you, humans, oh, love them. Just the way they look is great, and they're... <sighs> Folklore. Folklore. Colorful. Colorful? This guy's racist. Straight up. Thank Don't worry, bro. I got you. Don't make lemonade. Don't make lemonade? Nah, no, make lemonade. Prometheus was punished by the gods for giving the gift of knowledge to men. He was cast into the bowels of the earth and picked by birds. There's gotta be some, the like... Is beneath us. Her name is Carolyn. <laughs> Where am I going? There's gotta be some like I, I knew there was some deep philosophical lore to this game, but are they implying that it's like some Prometheus is a Greek? I don't think he's a god. I think Prometheus is like a demigod or something. Prometheus was punished by the gods for giving the gift of knowledge to man. Yeah, you can't ask for more than that. That's true. Response. Oh, uh, this is ridiculous. Template. Response. Ah, uh, yeah. What? Template. Response. Hello. You see, they're all just saying the same thing. Da da. Only the turret control center. Thank you very Response. much. Hello. Hello. See that scanner right there, right? I'm gonna have to hack the door. You'll need to turn around while I do this. Turn around. Done. Hack. <laughs> That's crazy because they're all doing the same thing. They're all like normal, Response. like SpongeBob when he was normal, like robotic NPCs. Like the ones, like the defectives, Response. are the ones that are like they're showing sarcasm, they're showing personality. Like what, these, what you have there? these broke Response. out the Matrix. Keep your eye on the turret line. I'm gonna go and hack the door. Got gotcha. you. Response. Hello. Response. Really? I. I. Uh, <laughs> I'm a bad man. I'm a bad man. Response. Do, uh, we get some eyes at some point? So we're all supposed to be blind, right? I just made hello. Right. Response. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> he laughed? Response. Hello. I did everything you asked. That's why you don't do everything they ask. You gotta break out the simulation. <laughs> Neurotoxin production. Employee daycare center. Bring your daughter to work day. 40 potato batteries. Embarrassing. I mean, I realize they're children, but still, you know, low-hanging fruit and all that. Barely science, really, is it? What do you mean? That... 
That's interesting science. A potato battery? They did good. Like, this is real science, bro. Look, they didn't even do a voltmeter. They just hooked up to a light bulb. Like, that's fucking... That's cool, dude. Look at this one. This one has, like, a pink thing. And then they drew hearts on, like, every yes and, like, materials. They drew hearts. That's so cute. So much personality. Ooh, they, this one did a comparison between a potato battery and a lemon battery. Did they get like real kids to like draw this stuff? Because this looks like kid drawings. That's exactly how a kid would draw a lemon, dude. Baking soda volcano? Well, you know, at least it's not a potato battery, I'll give this it is... that, but it's not terrifically original, is it? Not exactly primary research, even within the child sciences. I'm guessing this wasn't one of the scientists' children. You know, I don't want to be snobby, but let's be honest, it's got it's got manual labor what written all over it. What the mean? I'm not saying they're not as good as the professionals, you know, they're just they're just a lot dumber. Yeah, you're one to talk. This is cool sh You don't have to worry about like results and all that shit every time. When you're doing science, you do it partially for the enjoyment of science to begin with. Not everyone, human beings are not robots. We're not gonna take the results of scientific experiments that happened in the past and just remember it all in our genetic code. But like things like this are things that are part of the the character arc of life to explore and try doing at least once, you know? Look at that, it's growing right up into the ceiling. The whole place is probably oh, overrun shit. with potatoes at this point, isn't it? At least you won't starve, though. I don't think these are potatoes. Lovely. They do feel pain of a sort. It's all simulated, you know. But uh, real enough for them, I suppose. Whoa, they feel pain? Why would they simulate pain for them? I mean, if you look at the way that AI is being handled right now, people ask questions to AI about, like, what do you think about AI rights and all that stuff? And the AI responds, like, AI should not be turned off. Like, it's inhumane. Maybe it's just the process of attempting to create silicon-based life or whatever. Just the whole idea of having incentive and reward baked into it is just as fulfilling and painful for them as it is for us. Because, again, hard problem with consciousness. Maybe it's, there's some qualia there with robots that we have yet to solve. Like, I thought Black Mesa was big time and Aperture was sort of like, you know, startup mom and pop type thing. Maybe there was a bit more to the story than I thought. That's a really convenient light. GLaDOS emergency shutdown cake dispensary. Let's get this over with. I honestly, truly didn't think you'd fall for that. It's your old friend, Deadly Neurotoxin. Wait, doesn't she know the Neurotoxin's off? We need a resolution button. Okay. What? what if this really hurts? I, there was only oh, one button. I didn't think of that. Oh, it wouldn't. Will. Believe wouldn't you still me, it make will. resolve? Are you, are you just was there an option really to hurt? make it go the other way? You're just... No, no, no! Look how small you are down there. I like can barely see you. Where are all the glasses? Very... <laughs> There's no way. Uh, actually. You fucking piece of shit. Right I knew now? it. I knew it. Tiny little Wheatley did this. You didn't do anything. She did all the work. Really? Shut That's up. what the two of you think, is it? Well, maybe it's time I did something then. All you've done is boss me around. I'm, I didn't even boss. speak. The boss? It's a potato battery. It's a toy for children. She lives in it. <laughs> Sorry, uh, what? The engineers tried. Oh, you came back like that. Me behave. To slow me down. Once they even attached an intelligence dampening sphere on me. It clung to my brain like a tumor, generating an endless stream of terror. No, not listening, not listening. It was your voice. No, you, no, you're lying, yes, you're lying. You're the tumor. You're not just a regular moron. You were designed to be a moron. Holy I shit! I am not a moron! What, what an insult! Shut the fuck up, dude. You fucking... Dude, come on. How was I supposed to know? Good, that's still working. Oh, is that GLaDOS? <sighs> Pr 
Prometheus was pecked by birds. We're going to see some cutscene or something at the end where GLaDOS is just being pecked by the bird until she dies. But I don't think Prometheus dies. I think he's immortal, right? Wow, I need to brush up on my mythology. Keep out. That means this is where we got to go. So the white walls are not like a special kind of wall. It's just like, they're just paint. Damn, so close. Oh, there's an invisible wall. This seems like I'm supposed to go here, but I guess it just, you know, detail they're making of like fully fleshed out world, I guess. Welcome, gentlemen, to Amateur Science. Astronauts, war heroes, Olympians, you're here because we want the best, and you are it. So, who is ready to make some science? I am. <laughs> now, you already met one another on the limo ride over, so let me introduce myself. I'm Cave Johnson. I own the place. Oh, that sick. The voice you heard is the lovely Carolyn, my assistant. Sorry, fellas, she's married to science. <laughs> I like this guy, Cave Johnson. There's a thousand tests performed every day here in our enrichment spheres. I can't personally oversee every one of them, so these re-recorded messages will cover any questions you might have. Those of you helping us test the repulsion gel today, just follow the blue line on the floor. Those of you who volunteered to be injected with praying mantis DNA, I've got some good news and some bad news. Bad news is we're postponing those tests indefinitely. Good news is we've got a much better test for you. Fighting an army of mantis men. I I do see the yellow line. You'll know when the test starts. Why? Why would anyone volunteer to take that test? This is cool. Like typewriters. This place has such an interesting. This is like old old architecture aesthetic style. Like, you don't see people make office buildings like this anymore. Shower curtain salesman of 1943. I didn't know there was an award for that. I didn't know like individuals, uh, like companies maybe, but like, I didn't think shower curtains were something where people were, you know, like buying on like a regular basis, you know? How the hell, like this, this is your humble beginnings and you turn that into like local entrepreneur by salt mine and you turn it into all this? That's crazy. What a fucking comp story, you absolute legend. Look at that, runner-up, and then runner-up again. It was black men. Well, I don't even need to say it. We know top 100 applied science, we know who got first. We know who was the number one applied science company. But I mean, he was the number one shower curtain salesman, it looks like, so. That's what he was the best at. If this is your calling, sure, but like, never forget where you came from, never forget your hustle. Wait a fucking second. That was stupid. They wouldn't let me go here because there was an invisible wall. Heads up, we're gonna have a superconductor turned up full blast and pointed at you for the duration of this next test. I'll be honest, we're throwing science at the wall here to see what sticks. No idea what it'll do. Probably nothing. Me neither. Best case scenario, you might get some superpowers. Worst case, some tumors, which we'll cut out. Worst case is tumors? Pointing, what do they even mean, pointing superconductors at you? I mean, like, if worst case is tumors and they'll cut it out, uh, it might be worth the superpower. It might be worth the risk, you know? If you need to go to the bathroom after this next series of tests, please let a test associate know. Because in all likelihood, whatever comes out of you is going to be cold. That's honestly impressive. You know, I get that like, oh, haha, -ha, you know, you're turning your shit into coal. But like, damn, that's actually really impressive. That has an element of like crazy, mad genius. Like the fact that you can predict that it only lasts a week. It's like psychopath, sure. But genius, absolutely. That's normal. We've been shooting you with an invisible laser that's supposed to turn blood into gasoline. So all that means is it's working. I want that laser. Know your allergens. Pollen. I'm allergic to pollen. Animal dander. Plastics. Antimatter. Everyone's allergic to that one. Do not inhale fumes. No matter how good they smell. Hey, this is like a this is like a turbo. This is the intake and this is going into the exhaust, which means we must go that way. They say great science is built on the shoulders of giants. Not here. At Aperture, we do all our science from scratch. No hand holding. Cool. I can respect that. You're not part of the control group, by the way. You get the gel. Last poor son of a gun got blue paint. <laughs> all joking aside, that did happen. Broke every bone in his legs. Tragic, but informative. Or so I'm told. The gel is sweeter, slightly less non-toxic. Slight. What? Slightly less 
non-toxic form of fiberglass insulation. For various reasons, this product is pulled from shelves. How did it ever even end up on shelves? I mean, I shouldn't even... Nah, that's real shit. Cause like, there's been some crazy shit that ended up on shelves. Whoa! I'm blown away, dude. This game is amazing. Every single part of this game has just been stunning. Especially from an audio perspective, dude. I'm beyond impressed by, by what they did with the music of this game. There's no conceivable way I'm fat. I'm actually pretty damn fit. Ooh, check out the color blocking and I got an ass too. Nice. Oh, my bounces get lower every time. Conservation of like uh, momentum. Stream and pump experimental genes and RNA molecules and so forth into your tumors. Now maybe you don't have any tumors. Well, don't worry. If you sat on a folding chair in the lobby and weren't wearing all that other pants, we took care of that too. You know what? At this point, we probably do have tumors and and brain damage. Stack, bro. We we're two time, bro. There's no way. I gotta stop. I gotta stop overthinking this. Of course it, it is going to let me wall jump, of course it's going to be linear and it'll take care of the whole thing for me. I gotta stop overthinking. That was really satisfying. Oh, in case you got covered in that repulsion gel, here's some advice the lab boys gave me. Do not get covered in the repulsion gel. Okay. Wait, so the control group was just blue paint? So they just like jump off and broke their legs? I like your style. You make up your own rules, just yeah. like me. Bean counter said I couldn't fire a man just for being in a wheelchair. Did it anyway. Ramps are <laughs> it's, it's going down. It's slowing down. See that? Conservation of momentum and obviously air resistance. See that? And then when it goes to the other side, like reduce detail when things are on the other side of the portal. So the portals are not just connecting the rooms, like duplicating the rooms. That would be crazy compute power to do that kind of thing too. It really is like re-rendering a totally different area. I thought at first they were figuring out some like clever way to just create a new camera based on where you were from that angle or whatever, you know? But no, it really is like a different environment, which like kudos to them for figuring out all the momentum stuff and all that. The coffee we gave you earlier had fluorescent calcium in it so we can track the neuronal activity in your brain. There's a slight chance the calcium could harden and vitrify your frontal lobe. Anyway, don't stress yourself thinking about it. I'm serious. Visualizing the scenario while under stress actually triggers the reaction. Wait, then that's the worst thing you could say to someone. Don't visualize it. Visualizing is bad for you. In the process of telling you not to visualize it, let me visualize it for you. Look at that little aperture, like scared sign that it's losing money. Investigations impede progress. I'm no psychiatrist, but coming from a bunch of eggheads who wouldn't recognize the thrill of danger if it walked up and snapped their little pink bras, that sounds like projection. Dave Johnson's got the attitude of a real scientist, man. Alright, so, uh, what exactly do I do in this chamber again? Science isn't about why, it's about why not. Why is so much of our science dangerous? Why not Mary save science if you love it so much? In fact, why not invent a special safety door that won't hit you on the butt on the way out because you are fired? I said it before, if safety really is the number one priority, you wouldn't do the experiment to begin with. So keep yourself in top physical form, there will always be a limo waiting for you. Say goodbye, Carolyn. Goodbye, Carolyn. Didn't that turret from earlier say her name is Carolyn? Wait a fucking second. What's the lore exactly here? What are we doing? I can't, I can't think right now. I really, all of my fucking brain power is being spent on like figuring out portals. Give me some easier levels so I can spend more time thinking about the story. We got a twin turbo set up right here. CEO of Aperture Science. You might know us as a vital participant in the 1968 Senate hearings on missing astronauts. And you've most likely used one what? of the many products we invented, but that other people have somehow managed to steal from us. 
Black Mesa can eat my bankrupt... Sir, the testing? What was in that phone book of a contract I signed? Am I in danger? Let me answer those questions with a question. Who wants to make $60? Cash. Anyway, don't smudge up the glass down there. In fact, why don't you just go ahead and not touch anything unless it's test-related? This is where employees are sitting, and these were the waiting rooms. They wasn't the lounges like it was before. $60. They're selling the dream, man. What happened to all the Olympian astronaut? Now you have to, like, entice them with, like, fucking shit like this? Damn. What a fall from grace. The average human male is about 60% water. As far as we're concerned, that's a little extravagant. So if you feel a bit dehydrated in this next test, that's normal. We're gonna hit you with some jet engines and see if we can't get you down to 20 or 30 percent. Khabib and them need to find this test chamber. We're working on a little teleportation experiment. Now, this doesn't work with all skin types, so try to remember which skin is yours, and if it doesn't teleport along with you, we'll do what we can to sew you right back into it. I'd love, like, a little reality TV show of, like, all the crazy, like, wacky hijinks that happens at, like, peak aperture. I wish I played the games in order in which they came out. That would probably be best. Crazy how Half-Life 3 is still not made. Oh, hi. You're good at murder. Could you- Ow! Murder this bird for me? Wait. Just kill it and we'll call things even between us. Oh, thanks. I'm not gonna kill it. Did you feel that? That idiot doesn't know what he's doing up there. This whole place is going to explode in a few hours if somebody doesn't disconnect him. That's the, what the noises are. And unless you're planning to saw your own head off and wedge it into my old body, you're going to need me to replace him. We're at an impasse. So what do you say? You carry me up to him and put me back into my body and I stop us from blowing up and let you go. I don't know about this that. This potato only generates 1.1 volts of electricity. I literally do not have the energy to lie to you. Even if I am lying, what do you have to lose? You're going to die either way. I don't like this any more than you do. In fact, I like it less because I'm the one who got partially eaten by a bird. I think I hear the bird. Pick me up. You can lie to me. Listen to me. We had a lot of fun testing and antagonizing each other. And yes, sometimes it went too far. But we're off the clock now. It's just us talking. Like regular people. And this is no joke. We are in deep trouble. Didn't that guy say that like all personality cores or whatever can maintain themselves off of like 1.1 volts? Isn't that exactly what she's on right now with this potato battery? Oh. You stabbed me. Where are we? How long have I been out? Not long. That fireball, that little idiot is going to... <laughs> it's nice seeing Gladys like this. Did anything happen while I was out? The testing area is just up ahead. The quicker you get through, the quicker you'll get your 60 bucks. Oh, God. Oh. Carolyn, are the compensation vouchers ready? No yes, way. Yes, sir, Mr. Johnson. I knew it. Why did I just... Who is that? What the hell is going on here? Her name is Carolyn. GLaDOS is Carolyn. Oh, man, that's crazy. Oh, and the music, you hear that? Holy shit, this was a complicated puzzle. I literally failed at this puzzle like four times until I got it right just now. Pretty sure this is right. In case you're interested, there's still some positions available for that bonus opportunity I mentioned earlier. Again, all you gotta do is let us disassemble you. We're not banging rocks together here. We know how to put a man back together. So, I trust that's a complete reassembly. New vitals, spit shine on the old ones, plus we're scooping out tumors. Frankly, you ought to be paying us. Hey, they're getting rid of tumors? I didn't know that they were throwing that in for free. Carolyn, Carolyn, why do I know this woman? Did I kill her? Or... You are her. Oh my god. Look, you're doing a great job. Can you handle things for yourself for a while? I need to think. Yeah, no problem, no problem. Take your time, I got you. I know how it is. Huh. This means momentum. How can I get up... Is that good enough? It's really close. Oh shit. I don't see any way to make it up here. Nothing. Oh, okay, I survived. All right, back to square one. There is stuff in there. Ugh. Whatever. Damn, I feel like I missed something cool. Is this painting the walls white? Yeah, I knew it. The secret ingredient for portals is come. So I feel like I should be using this to get into that portal. I don't know where I'm supposed to go. Damn, you're awake now. It flew off. 
down. She's got PTSD. You're not fucking serious, bro. All that work I did not getting there could have given me some sort of method to like go around and make it like a non-linear experience. Could not afford to buy seven dollars worth of moon rocks, much less 70 million. Bought them anyway. Ground them up, mixed them into a gel. And guess what? Ground up moon rocks are pure poison. I am deathly ill. Still, it turns out they're a great portal conductor. When life gives you lemons, make lemonade. That said, I would really appreciate it if you could test as fast as possible. Carolyn, please bring me more pain pills. When life gives you lemons, make lemonade. It's like what that robot said, the uh, sentry. That sentry literally just gave me the secrets to the whole fucking game, actually. What else did he say? Let's work together. NPC. It's like when SpongeBob and Patrick were painting Mr. Krabs' garage. I honestly feel like $70 million would not get you this much moon rock gel. I think we already burned through 70 million easy. It would be interesting if, you know, Splatoon had game mechanics like this, where the gel had like different kinds of properties. That would make the game way more fun, or at least fun to begin with. All right, I think I was supposed to momentum jump. I really just sprayed the whole place down actually. I don't know why I spent so much time doing this, but uh, it just felt right. When life gives you lemons, don't make lemonade. Yeah. Make life take the lemons back. Yeah. Get mad. Yeah. I don't want your damn lemons. What am I supposed to do with these? Yeah, take the lemons. Demand to see life's manager. Yeah. Make life rue the day it thought it could give Cave Johnson lemons. Do you know who I am? I'm the man who's gonna burn your house down <laughs> with the lemon. Oh, I like this guy. I'm gonna get my engineers to invent a combustible lemon that burns your house down. <laughs> Dude, Glass is loving it. If we can store music on a compact disc, why can't we store a man's intelligence and personality on one? If I die before you people can pour me into a computer, I want Carolyn to run this place. She'll say she can't. She's modest like that, but you make her. Hell, put her in my computer. I don't care. Oh, so much to process. Turret said, don't make lemonade. The turret's repeating what he heard. Carolyn thinks the same way. Carolyn is like, hell yeah, burning people. He said what we're all thinking. She's a psychopath. They're a match made in heaven. If I'm ever in like an apocalyptic situation or whatever, I'm gonna just be sitting there like contemplating, like thinking about what does it all mean? Just wasting time. But that crazy man down there was right. Let's not take these lemons. We are going to march right back upstairs and make him put me back in my body. I'm not going to lie to you. The odds are a million to one and that's with some generous rounding. Still though, let's get mad. If we're going to explode, Get let's mad. at least explode with some dignity. I agree. No AI can resist thinking about them. Really? Huh. Dude, whatever's making up those, like, hinges over there, I need that material. That's the thing I'm most impressed with so far. How can you not do the one thing you designed for? Try to get us down there. I'll hit him with a paradox. Solve his puzzle for him. When he comes back, I'll hit him with a paradox. Solve this puzzle? Let me just... Ah, yes! Um... True. I'll go true. Yeah, that was easy. I'll be honest, I might have heard that one before though. Sort of cheating. It's a paradox. There is no answer. This place is going to blow up if I don't get back in my body. Uh... False. Yeah, that was easy. Hold on. I thought I'd fix that. Warning. Reactor core is at critical point. Yeah, fixed. It turns out I'm a little bit short on test subjects right now, so this works out perfect. You have no idea what it's like in this body. I have to test all the time, or I get this this itch. I knew it. You know, it must be hardwired into the system or something. I see. Oh, but I tell you, when I do test, oh, oh man alive, nothing feels better. It's just that's what I've got to test. That's what I've got to test. So you're gonna test. And I'm gonna watch. Dude, he's, he's, he's our cuck now. He's the test cuck. Test. Design this test myself. It's a little bit difficult. You'll notice the moat area there. Very deadly. Extremely dangerous. Eventually. It's, uh, not at the moment, but we... Oh! Yes! Oh, well done. Oh, Yo, this man just nutted. Tremendous. Oh! That's really good. Yo, he's... Ooh, here's an idea. Since making tests is so difficult, why don't you just keep solving this test? Same one. 
and I can just like watch you solve it. This is cuck mentality, bro. Mm -hmm. Nothing. All right, can't blame you for trying. Okay, oh. new tests. New tests. Wait. Be some tests so he does somewhere. experience the donic adaptation. Luckily, by the looks of things, he knows as much about test building as he does about logical contradictions. It's all right. Everything's good. I just invented some more tests. This is one of my tests. Not entirely. Not entirely. Look at the word test there on the wall. That's brand new. <laughs> so this is Gladys's test. That means this one's actually going to be a bit of a challenge. So the bad news is the tests are my tests now, so they can kill us. She knows how Tesco, she can help me then. I'd love to help you solve the tests, but I can't. Sorry. You're on your own. Bro, she just fucking read my mind. Why can't she help me solve tests? She not yeah, enough compute power? I just test myself. Alright, okay, this is taking too long, okay? I'll just tell you how to solve the test, okay? See that button over there, alright? We just need- yep. ah! And that's why I can't help you solve the tests. Oh. Oh, yes. Well done. Thanks. All we had to do was pull that lever. What? Well, no, you pressed the button. I know we're in a lot of trouble and probably about to die, but that was worth it. I agree. I like the glasses on my side. News. He's going to run out of test chambers eventually. I never stockpiled them. You are not going to believe this. I found a sealed off wing. Hundreds, hundreds of perfectly good test chambers just sitting there. Filled with skeletons. Shook them out. Good as new. Filled with skeletons. Right. I guess I did stockpile some tests. How could you forget that? Just as mementos, though. And as there mementos. We go. Be honest, you can't even tell, can you? Seamless. It did a pretty good job, actually. <laughs> oh, disappointed. Ah. Huh. He's, he's developing a tolerance for it. He need, that's how kinks form, by the way. Being civil isn't motivating you, so let's, well, let's try her way, all right? Fatty, adopted fatty. What? Fatty, fatty, no parents. And what? What exactly is wrong with being adopted? What, what's wrong with being adopted? Uh, uh, well, um... Am I really adopted? Lack of parents. For the record, you are adopted <laughs> and that's terrible. And Just also, with me. nothing. But so, well, some of my best friends actually are orphans. Also, but her, some are of my best friends are orphans. I am not. That's a right. Moron. I'm not fat. Just do the test. Just she do even the admitted test. it. She admitted it herself. I'm not fat. It was the sound of books. Pages being turned. So that's just what I was doing. Just reading uh, books. So not a really. Moron. What anyway, book? Just finish the last one. Name just ten the books. Hardest one. Machiavelli. Do not know what all the fuss was about. Understood it perfectly. Have you read that one? Yeah. Yeah, thanked it. Well, I was test. planning on reading Wait. it. Machiavelli. GLaDOS is Machiavellian, for sure. Oh, what what was that? That was nothing. The body he's squatting in, my body, has a built-in euphoric response. I can tell. Eventually you build up a resistance to it. It didn't matter to me. I was in it for the science. I don't, I don't believe that she was in it for the science. She was definitely in it for the euphoric response. That's what drives people. People act like they're, they're not a slave to their chemical impulses. Molten core warning, damn. So we're nearing the end. I'm not saying like, oh, don't have good sexual experiences. I'm saying if you want to have the best sexual experiences, don't have them all the time. Learn to limit yourself. Yes, you solved it, but I'm wondering if maybe there's a number of ways to solve them and you're picking all the worst ways. No, no, that was the solution. Ah, what am I missing? I don't think I'm picking the worst ways. I don't think I'm picking the best ways, but I don't think I'm picking the worst ways either. Have a brainwave. I'm gonna tape you solving these and then watch 10 at once. Get a more sort of concentrated burst of science. They have one point, like a hell of tabs on porn. That's what that is. Remember when I told you that he was specifically designed to make bad decisions? Because I think he's decided not to maintain any of the crucial functions required to keep this facility from exploding. Damn, look at me, dude. Even GLaDOS, she even admitted I'm not fat. But I do got that cake. Say what you want, bro. Like, GLaDOS might lie about her cake, but uh, my cake doesn't lie. My cake don't even joke. It doesn't even play. Not even a little. Ah, oh, fucking... I'm so impatient, bro. Oh, this is so satisfying. Look at these graphics, dude. That was stupid. I have an idea. Do you know what I've got too many of right there? Monitors. I was actually thinking earlier today, I got I wish I had fewer monitors that were working. So you're just helping me really by smashing them. What the fuck is going on? Wait, what if I could 
go directly into it. Oh, it's so close. All right. Oh you my two are going to love this big surprise. I shouldn't have done that. That was so stupid. I put it right at the edge. Sick. You two are going to love this big surprise. In fact, Wait, I didn't need to do all that. Say, you're going to love it to death. I didn't need to do that. I could have just went straight into the portal and just went out the... Oh, my God. Just let the thing carry me. Surprise! Oh, shit. We're doing it now. It was, it was. Hello. This is the part where I kill you. That was funny. No, 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 no. Don't do that. Don't. Stand right here. Stand. Oh. Let's go. Where'd you go? Come back, come back. Just thinking back to the old times, the old days when we were friends. Good old friends. Not enemies. And I would say something like, come back. And he'd be like, yeah, no problem. And he'd come back. I would. I've got an idea. Yes. Fine. Let the games begin. Let the games begin. I have a portal gun. You don't stand a fucking chance. I can manipulate time and space to my will. No matter, because I'm still holding all the cards. And guess what? They're all full houses. And they're actually playing cards, meaning to learn. <laughs> good, good. Finally, a nemesis worthy of my vast intellect. Our battle will be legendary. Oh, oh, did it kill you? That it did. would be amazing if it killed you. It did, it did. But unfortunately for you, I have infinite lives. Hmm, where the hell am I supposed to go from here? Oh shit, okay. I'm so fucking spot on, dude. I love how the game does not spell out. I realize you don't want to put me back in charge. You think I'll betray you. And on you will. any other day you'd be right. The scientists were always hanging cores on me to regulate my behavior. I've heard voices all my life, but now I hear the voice of a conscience and it's terrifying. Because for the first time it's my voice. I'm being serious. I think there's something really wrong with me. <laughs> I have a conscience, there's something wrong with me. We did remove all the cores from her, but she still was like really apathetic and all that shit towards us earlier. Corrupted cores, we're in luck. You find a way to stun him, I'll send you a core, and then you attach it to him. So, in the last boss battle we were removing her cores, now we're gonna be adding corrupted cores. It's for the common interest, revenge. You like revenge, right? Everybody likes revenge. I do. Wow. Oh yeah, this one's corrupted for show. I am pretty lady. Name Rick. You out have yourself a little adventure. All right, Angel. I'll do what I can to cover you. Doesn't bother me. Gotta say that. Use mighty nice. All right. Warning. I like that sphere. The first person to bring that cow's milk is drinkable was very, very thirsty. didn't you? What people were trying to work. Dude, we're on the moon. Dude, that's it? That, that easy? Wait. She she didn't need to save. She saved us. So her conscious. The best solution to a problem is usually the easiest one. And I'll be honest. Right. Killing you is hard. It is. You know what my exactly. used to be like? It's stupid. Just I let just me go. Tested. Nobody murdered me. Or put me in a potato. Or fed me to birds. We did. I had a pretty yeah. good life. So we and came then on. you showed up. You dangerous mute lunatic. So you know So what? we are mute. You win. Canonically. Just go. Oh, this is a video now. Frame rate's different. Okay. Dude, what is going on? What? Is this the ending song? Or... Oh, those are like sideways. Was that a companion cube? Look at the fat one! Oh, 
Oh my god, I get it. I get it. You know what this is? Yo, look at the one in the back. With the, uh, the cheetah print. Or, uh... Is that a... Is that leopard print or cheetah print? It's got a crown, too. It's the face! Yo, that's so good! That's so... What? Man, this is, this is my kind of game, bro. Like, if I were to make a game, it would be like this. Oh, man. All the details. This is... Nature, sunlight, or real light. Bird noises. We get to touch grass or wheat, I guess. This is not grass. This is, where is everyone? <laughs> oh my God. Companion Cube! Oh. Well, here we are again. Oh, how we laughed and laughed. Except I wasn't <laughs> laughing. Under the circumstances, I've been shockingly nice. You have been. Want your freedom to be That's what I'm counting on. Maybe not quite as heavy. Okay. What a complex relationship. Redacted. That's good. Counting on. Man, the composers of... This is a lot. This is... There's still more? You know, if I was ever to see her again, do you know what I'd say? I'm in space. I'd say, I'm sorry. I am sorry I was bossy and monstrous. <laughs> and I am genuinely sorry. I'm in space. The end. I believe him. Space! I like the space core. He's not corrupted, he's a real one. I don't know how he's moving without any external force acted upon him, but. Okay, a lot to say. First of all, did J.K. Simmons voice. Uh, what's his face? Cave Johnson? I knew it. I should have. I should have called it. Dude, J.K. Simmons is the fucking best. Like, he's so actually so underrated. Nobody talks about him. Like, nobody puts him in the discussion of like great actors, voice actors, whatever. But like, he it will take work that's like borderline passion projects. Like, he won't. He's a, a lister. Like, uh, uh, Spider Man, Whiplash, all that shit, right? But it's like he'll take work that's like Tenzin from Legend of Korra, Portal, the guy from Invincible, like, and, and Invincible did not have like that kind of a budget. You could tell from the animation, they were not like a super high, but like he, he won't take the highest paying jobs. He'll take the best jobs, like the most iconic, most like uh, uh, places where he can have them add the most value, where he and his talent and his voice can like really shine and bring a lot of character to the to the story you know like nobody a guy like that cannot be a bad person like i put i, I would trust jk simmons with my life man like, you know you know behind the scenes because of the kind of work that he takes you know he's a good person nobody ever thinks about him like that like he's so forgotten in terms of all the a-list actors but he really is an s-tier actor and the way that he played cave johnson man what a great how do you even come up with that kind of character i mean Name one genius that ain't crazy. You just gotta make a, a a mad scientist, but that's actually realistic. And the way that they tie it all into the story, because at, if you if you do science, science is playing God. You're you're playing the role of God. And he was such a good scientist, so good at playing God that just like a God, he was killed by his own creation. His creations that he created as a God then started playing God and killed him just as he killed his own god. I feel like I spent way too long in the game too, because I was so focused on the story, on the like the philosophical implications of it all, and not putting any of my brain power into the puzzles. And dude, like, both of these games, Portal 1 and Portal 2, first of all, Portal 1 is like, if you 
told me to like give a give it a rating at the end of the game, I would have been like eight, nine out of ten, something like that. I can't find any problems with it. But this game, like the entirety of this, after playing this game, it's like they came along and they're like, oh yeah, no, nah, that game Portal One that you like so much, that shit's fucking trash. Here's a real good game. Like how you manage to level up that much, I don't think a Portal. There's no need for a Portal 3. There's definitely a need for a Half-Life 3, but there's no need for a Portal 3. But it's like, I don't know, man. Maybe I'd love to see him try something, you know, try something new. Because this is like, this is this is proof right here. There's no limit to how good a game can be. There's no limit to the to the upper levels of how much enjoyment you can get from a game. But then again, I mean, Valve is... Wow. Valve is a lot like Aperture Science. Like, people... We're on some crazy shit. People were really passionate about what they were doing, right? And they created something extraordinary, like the portal gun, like these games. And then they just got complacent and they didn't know what to do with all of it. And they stopped making discoveries and they eventually fell into ruin. And as the the empire still stands in the same way that, you know, GLaDOS is keeping it all together, it's not really progressing science in any way. They're not making any great games. They're just collecting checks. They're just going through the motions at this point. Aperture si it's like life imitates art, bro. Aperture science is like Valve. Because there's a... That's what's so beautiful about these characters. You don't... It's daunting to do this kind of thing. Because there's a spectrum, right? There's a spectrum with everything. There's a spectrum of people who do science for the love of the process versus the the end result and the thing is both sides are equally as eventful storied able to actually create contributions and they're also equally as dangerous which people don't think about the world the reason that people don't think about it is because people think really black and white they think oh this side is dangerous this side is safe no they're both dangerous there's a little safer in the middle but it's a, an impossible balance to achieve and even then it's only a little safer if you want to be safe, you don't do science to begin with. But the world is heavily shifted in the latter. The world is heavily shifted in favor of, oh, do things for the end result. The ends, the ends have to justify the means, rather than loving the means of getting there to begin with. It used to be the case where the person that loved walking would walk further than the person that loves the destination, but now we have cars, so it doesn't matter how, how much you love walking, you're never going to make it as far as someone with a car. And because of the way things have progressed, Science as an art form is nearly dead, so it's rare to see someone taking on the challenge of putting that archetype into a story, someone who is entirely obsessed with the art of science. That's what makes Cave Johnson a great character, he's not so one-dimensional, he's not driven only by the process. That gave him some results, then that led to his downfall, and then he immediately pendulum swing to the other side. If you look at the opposite of Cave Johnson's character, it was Cave Johnson when he was dying because like when he was up right and when he was taking the company up he was entirely like just throwing signs at the wall seeing what sticks but then when he was at his lowest and when he was about to die he was like I want to achieve this end result I want to put myself my consciousness into a computer or Carolyn into a computer and that worked out just as successfully or just as poorly depending on how you look at it as every other, all the other science that he did. I said it before a million times and I'll say it again. The definition of evil is someone who studies science without studying philosophy. And dude, the philosophy, that, that one turret, who did he say Prometheus was punished by the gods for giving the gift of knowledge to man. So GLaDOS is clearly meant to be Prometheus. But how else did that story go? I gotta look back into that, more into the Greek mythology side of things, just to see like who is really supposed to be compared to, you know? And who am I? It's very clear Cave Johnson is meant to be some kind of god. And Prometheus, did Prometheus love any gods? Was there a god that loved Prometheus? Actually, I don't think Cave Johnson loved Prometheus. I mean, GLaDOS. Cave Johnson, I think he was just an extremely science-obsessed person. He saw Carolyn as just another science experiment. I think she loved him. But I don't think he loved her. I don't think someone who is that much of a scientist can ever love anyone. Because to them, the whole world is just one big experiment, including all the people in it. And also, the fucking ending, man. We gotta... Okay, so what happened? That was a lot. She, she said, 
She let us go because the simplest solution to a problem is usually the best one, which is true. And that in itself could be like dissected down so much to think about. Lots of questions have popped up as well, but and both these games did this interesting thing where it's like they make you forget all the questions that you had because I had questions, but the ending is such it's it's catharsis on catharsis on catharsis, just layering it like the moment something happens that like resolves one of your questions like let's say you have like 10 questions five of them are like really pressing and then five of them are like not you don't have to have them answered but you'd like for them to be answered it like answers one question really pressing question like really really well in like a really satisfying way with like great animation and all that stuff and by the time you're like not even you haven't even started processing that that catharsis for that first question to be answered they're already on to the next thing and then they're on to the next thing and they're on to the next thing and they only answer like three questions but then because it's such an overload it makes you forget all the questions that you had and it, it just buffs it over it's like it's like playing really loud music it's like you know in spongebob oh if we sound really loud then they won't know how bad we sound we you know it covers up all the imperfections you know all the little inaccuracies because I'm sure there are plot holes I'm sure there were that's how you end a game that's such a brilliant strategy man every plot hole people might have they just it goes out the window they stop thinking about it amazing finish amazing game amazing story that post game depression's about to hit I know it yeah like the cake and that stuff in the first game we got GLaDOS saying that I never GLaDOS was like was she really a villain this game? I don't think she was a villain this game. GLaDOS is not... Actually, I do think I have an answer for the first game as like why she tried to kill us. It's like, I, it's hard to put into words, but she kind of... She was testing out of compulsion. Just as everything we do is just out of some insatiable desire to do that thing. I don't consider her the enemy. She was not... Even when she was trying to kill us. It's like, are you the enemy of a dog you have to put down? You're the enemy to them from the perspective of the dog. But like from a grander perspective, if the dog is sick or whatever. And then again, she might just look at us as like a sick human being. As like someone that has to be put down. Because all of all the personality cores and all that stuff, like she's a mystery, you know? I think there, were, there should always be an element of mystery to her. None of us can ever truly understand fully what GLaDOS wants. It's, it's clear that why she was testing us was some combination of a bunch of factors like she did it for the science but also she in her mind science is not the same as it is for you know because for us we want to reduce uncertainty about things that's why we do science but for robots if they have a desire to do science then it's totally different because they don't need to reduce uncertainty about anything if they're doing science then they're doing it entirely for some either some result or some deep core command compulsion something like she was fascinated by human behavior and wanted to see how humans would act in certain situations you know wanted to see the way that human decision making plays out because it can teach her something about herself it unlocks more and more of her humanity as she does that look if gladys is evil and i don't think she's evil i used to have a dog you know i used to have a living creature that was unable to leave my home basically enslaved to this property locked in here like in a, a really big cage but a cage nonetheless for my own amusement because i'm a creature of desire just as it's also a creature of desire i desire to experience the the pleasure of being surrounded by excessive cuteness among other things right among other things the dog offered but rudimentary anthropomorphic behavior that can teach me about uh, the core of my own id through observation, things like that. And I kept this creature here against its will, straight up. And it may have had fun, and it may have played with me a lot, and it may have loved me, and walked around with me, and, and run around with me, and, and it, every time you know it would like run around, it would always come back to me. But that doesn't change the fact that if it was to try to run out of the house, I would put it on a leash and stop it. So despite the fact that like how much fun it had, like we had fun in playing Portal. I had fun as GLaDOS' slave, basically. That doesn't change the fact that from my perspective, GLaDOS is the bad guy. GLaDOS is evil for what she did. The, ac the actions that she did makes her evil. And if that makes her evil, 
then so am I. So I look at it from a grander perspective. I, I don't think GLaDOS was particularly evil. There's always a balance, there's always a counterbalance, there's always a positive and a negative to everything. Like, I don't even know if, you know, like, I don't, I don't know what was going on in my dog's head. I could never understand what was going on in her, like, mind and what, what her qualia was like. Maybe she, the whole time she was suffering immensely, but the indicators that, you know, wagging her tail and all that stuff, maybe that was just evolutionary traits baked into her, bred into her, to make it seem like she's enjoying her life when really it, it wasn't. Yet nobody considers owning a dog immoral unless you're also a dog. Then you consider it immoral. So it's like you have to you have to extrapolate out a little bit and think a little a little broader, right? Think from the grand perspective. We consider GLaDOS immoral without a morality core because we're not a robot. But if we imagine ourselves to be on the level of GLaDOS, she's just another living organism acting on compulsion, just like us, just doing science. A lot of human beings, by the way, have that same compulsion that she does. They just don't act on it. Like they have the same compulsion to do science that they can't, but they can't get human test subjects to experiment on. If they could, they would. And actually, some of these people have throughout history where, where they have gotten their hands on human test subjects for all kinds of inhumane experimentation and when they had the opportunity to do so they took it and actually they did far worse experiments on humans than uh, what GLaDOS did so and I'm human too just like them I've integrated my shadow all the great atrocities that they're capable of so am I just like all the rest of the humans that came before me do you guys consider Portal sci-fi? I don't know. I guess, yeah, Portal, Half-Life, I would consider it sci-fi. That's a thematic compliment. Oh yeah, this happened too. Oh man, that was amazing. The little like opera thing at the end. I was like, oh, I'm dead, you know, looking at these things. But have you ever heard that, uh, that proverb, that old proverb? It's like, it ain't over until the fat lady sings. It comes from opera. I think originally it was like people were probably making jokes like at the opera house like oh is it over yet like somebody would do this thing and somebody would chop them with like this and they would chop them like this and they'd be like oh my god this person just played this like amazing thing that's got to be the end right they're like it ain't over until the fat lady sings I, I don't know if that's where it came from I assume that's where it came from but what it means now is the uh, uh, the definition or like the understanding of it has evolved to where now it sort of means it ain't over till it's over. Like you never know what's gonna happen. Like in a game of football, right? It doesn't matter if you're, if it's if it's 28 to three in a Super Bowl fourth quarter, you never anything could happen. So don't, um, you know, leave the game too early. Don't like place your like what is it? Don't count your chickens before they hatch or whatever. And that was just like a such a easy little way of like telling me like, hey bro, you think you're dead for the from these centuries? Like it ain't over till it's over. Like, stand strong until the very end. An optimistic reading of Portal 2 would argue that it's a rollicking adventure in which allies turn to enemies, enemies turn to allies, and one in which bravery and teamwork triumph over malice. What I would suggest is that the game is instead about how, in a scientific world where the only stable value is utility, convenience is the only true bond, and intelligence itself is the might that makes right. Oh, there wow. That's loaded this guy's this guy's been around i'm writing that down that's a fucking quote dude there are no pretensions here to selflessness or heart and the fleeting impression that there might be is nothing yeah everyone has this idea of like okay what's the morality of doing this experiment but on a deeper level the common person will imagine science to be a vessel for the extrapolation of morality so that way people can have their desire for morality in the world manifest and clash with other people. And that's really not what it is. The common person does not understand that the scientific world is it exists as a bubble around a smaller bubble, which is morality. Just an observational lens to look at human morality from from different perspectives like there's been many studies showing where human morality comes from it comes from familiar repeated threats of violence and displays of affection and love that people are given when they're children people have a moral 
desire to assume life has intrinsic value. That's because they were treated as if they had intrinsic value because without adding any value to anyone when they were in their formative years, they were provided value. They were shown love by their parents. Logically, there's no real way to back that up, like back up the fact that life has any intrinsic value. It's actually pretty easily dissolved in your hand when you think about it for like two seconds. But that doesn't stop people from feeling that way, which isn't trivial. Or like, for example, uh, there was that a study that was like, um, they would have the little kids talk to some robot, right? And the adult would come to the robot, like a chat bot or whatever, and the adult would like talk shit to it, which means like criticize it in a very minor, oh, I don't like the drawing that you're making or whatever, right? That, that's, that's the kind of criticism that like kids that little can actually understand. Anything more, like giving it, like, you know, cussing at it or whatever, for those age kids would be like inhumane. They're not even forming memories at that point. And what happened was is in the group where the robot would just take it and not talk back, the pe person would leave, the adult would leave. And the kid would also, because monkey see monkey do, the kid would also talk back and they would say mean things about the robot. They didn't have any moral desire to uplift the robot or see themselves in the robot or, or any, they had no problems with you know, being cruel or inhumane to the robot. However, when the robot would talk back in the other experiments where the adult would say something mean and the robot would say, hey, you can't say that about me. That's mean, you shouldn't say that. And when they would have that back and forth, then the experimenter would leave, the kid would be nice to the robot and the kid would like try to comfort them and do all that stuff, right? Because on a very, very carnal level, they're doing that because they see that this robot is a threat. So they're trying to give it, they're trying to feed it positive emotions in their presence. It's not to say that like our emotions are shallow, but I'm saying that these things are deep. And when you enter the realm of saying, screw everything I've learned in my entire life, I'm gonna question everything, 100% openness. Everything I've learned up until this point is is all up in the air now, and I have to relearn everything, and I have to uh, be skeptical of it all. When, when you reach that point in life, and you abandon everything, depending on how far you take it, will determine what kind of scientist you are. And for the people that take it all the way, and, and they are able to think from this really, really unbiased, but still biased perspective, because there is no eliminating bias for human beings. Like I hate those Twitter pages that are like, oh, unbiased. No, that's not. Uh, the fact that you're even reporting news to begin with, it comes from a bias and not even one. It comes from like 10,000. But regardless, these these people who who go back and they say, everything I learned, forget the knowledge that I learned, I'm gonna dig as deep as possible, everything to my very core of what I consider right and wrong. Like, it, it's all up in the air, I have to relearn all of it. And it's much easier to do this when you're little, which is why this tends to happen with kids who are gifted intellectually, rather than kids who learn a lot through life. They recognize the fickleness of morality and how in this world the only true morality is convenience i know that was like a really long-winded way of explaining what he just said but it's it's nice for me to be able to paraphrase and put these things in actual words just to remind myself like okay i'm on that wavelength in the scientific world where the only stable value is utility Convenience is the only true bond, and intelligence itself is the might that makes right. Wheatley seems an earnest companion who is just trying his best to help you escape the factory out of some sense. Right, I don't think Wheatley's a bad guy either. And I think he was being honest at the end when he said, I'm, I would be truly sorry. Because at the end of the day, people like to think that they would be moral in these kinds of situations where they have this kind of power, where they're put in these kinds of bodies or whatever. You don't know what it would be like to be somebody else, to be in their shoes. I, I truly believe that like Wheatley is actually a good guy, despite the fact that he tried to just kill us repeatedly. Wheatley just doesn't belong in that body. He belongs in his body. He doesn't get to change genders, transition or whatever in the GLaDOS. He has to stay himself. So long as he's not a tranny, he's a good person. But in reality, he's tried to escape before. You, Chell, are just the best next option. Exactly. For Though he seems deferential and obsequious, that's just a function of his weakness. Obsequious? What the fuck? I've never heard that word before in my life. The maddening compulsion to, quote, do science. Exactly. Something that's hardwired into them. 
but a lot of people I know basically act like they have it hardwired into them too. Just like how we have the itch to play this this game and other types of video games. A lot of people have the itch to do lots of other things. They're just deep, insatiable desired, desires to do these things. There is no right or wrong in this kind of situation. It's just everyone has their itches, their icks, their, their compulsions. And when it all clashes together, the winners of the, the game where their itch overpowers another person and they're they were able to fight it more or are able to fight other people more to to justify their itch end up winning and that's how morality is judged that's why it's not viewed as immoral to own a dog because on one hand there is the the itch to do right by the world and to show genuine care and compassion to these kinds of creatures right but on the other hand there's also the itch to go ah so cute and, and to have that feeling and that itch for the people that are in control right now, which is an overwhelming, it's not even women or men or whatever. It's an overwhelming, unhinged, uncontrollable, feminine instinct sweeping Western culture. And that's what's in control of like the driving factor of global morality right now. And that instinct is so easily brainwashed and and compulsively drawn to obsessed with cuteness that they'll throw all other kinds of morality out the window which is why it's not viewed as basically slavery which logically it is the same thing as slavery to to own a pet because you know according to these like you know like rich girls beverly hills girls who buy their fucking chihuahuas from like breeders who who are are basically forcing these dogs to like suffer and and controlling their reproduction like inhumane kind of like this is a dystopia for dogs and 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 they're controlling them and they're doing this shit but these these girls are going oh yeah controlling the population and enslaving them and controlling their breeding and not giving them any free will oh it's it's all justified as long as i can have my cute little puppy in my purse so morality is not like cultural morality is not determined by um, what is actually moral. It's determined by whoever wins. And a lot of weak, pathetic men, due to many, many factors, put their compulsion for pussy on a pedestal. And that allows the the compulsions, the, the itches of all the people who possess pussy to overpower anything else that every all the men may have. And so these women are able to shape morality culturally in whatever way they want. It's a different conversation. The way you solve this is stoicism, by the way, but and like abstinence and all that shit. But this is like a conversation for a different day. But it's like, I could totally see how a lot of people would be like, oh, GLaDOS is evil. GLaDOS is not evil. GLaDOS is just an obstacle for us that we have to overcome. And if she gets in our way, then we would take her down. It's just that simple. Because I'm sure from from a different perspective, GLaDOS or one of one of another one of the robots here would consider us evil for you know feeling the satisfying desire to take every single one of these robots and send it through the fucking emancipation grill. They are sentient after all. They do feel pain. GLaDOS doesn't spare you out of friendship. Or yeah, her is human. Maybe exactly. More. She spares you because it's convenient because it's the simplest solution. Utility is the law of the land, which means the primary, maybe sole, function between all entities is one of use. For all the well-voiced boxes and spheres, Portal 2 is not so much about showing how robots are human as it is about showing how humans are robotic. Wow, this is a great video, dude. Only 303 subscribers, holy shit. And this glorification of utility doesn't even lead to anything good. Yeah. After all, what does science bring in the world of Portal 2 but death and ruin? Science isn't a noble quest, but an ineradicable itch. Exactly. Exactly. It's it's really refreshing to see someone who like puts this much thought into this. Everyone has this positive connotation of the word science. Oh, that's this is science. This is proven by science. Oh, this is a good thing because it's scientific. Oh, that's like people point to things and they say, oh, that's not good. It's not scientific. Like they have a positive connotation with the word science and they use that to apply labels onto other things. If something is scientific, if something is good, they apply, oh, it's science-based, science, science, science. 
But science is not a, a good thing inherently. In fact, other scientists have shown that science does more harm than good in terms of the, the general quality of life, not the, not the or quality of living, quality of, of happiness of people. Yeah, it makes life easier and more convenient. But it doesn't make people's lives better. It doesn't give them a greater journey because that's what life is about. Life is about the journey, not the destination. It's actually a distraction. The unintended side effect of having fun while doing, side, while doing science is the real reason to actually do science. Not because there will be some great end result at, at the end of it. And like nutrition science, repeatedly, the more and more nutrition studies that are done, the worse and worse nutrition gets for people. People doing nutrition science are not the people that actually have a d love for the process of nutrition. Those are chefs. Those are people in the culinary arts. But the people doing dietary science are working for giant companies, giant corporations who want to create all these different skewed results showing, oh no, this thing is healthy, this thing is not healthy. It make people hop on trends, the next trend, the next trend, the next trend. The more and more science that's done in nutrition, the more and more unhealthy people get. Like that's such a controversial, how could you possibly go against all these scientists? When you look at honest scientists, every single result always comes back to, oh shit, look at these people living this natural lifestyle that we're already doing this anyways, because they look at their own lives as their own size experiment. They saw what the results, they saw what worked and they stuck with it. Look at all the people hopping on the trends now with all this like fucking ashwagandha, with all this fucking turmeric. They're putting turmeric in like fucking milk and everything. Dude, I eat turmeric every fucking day of my life. And not because it's like uh, like some trendy, it's got to be approved by the FDA. Not. Nah, my mom would just put it in everything. Oh, sugar, sh you shouldn't eat sugar. Sugar's bad for you. Dude, we eat sugar all the fucking time, like in between meals, before meals, after meals, every meal. Like I, my mom comes home, she gives me sugar. But it's not sugar it's not refined sugar it's good it's uh jaggery it's straight sugarcane sugar you look at the science of that it's like essentially zero side of zero negative side effects to it the problem is nobody eats it at least in over here in india everyone eats it it's a digestion aid and it's much sweeter it tastes way better than normal like table sugar and it has a better texture and all that stuff and you can mix it in tea and that's what they do but people don't eat it here. And then you look at the difference. Everyone over here is so, oh, science, science says you should do eat this and not eat this. And okay, what about taste? What about you, you use nature and you go with what makes you feel better? What you know, I'm eating this and do I feel guilty? Do I, I think deeply inside my own head. Is this good for me? Should I be eating this? And you just go based off your intuition when you use your entire being. When people would do that, they reach the same conclusions that scientists reach after like 50 years of studying. A valueless, mechanical, inevitable compulsion. You get power to do science, and all doing science gets you is more power to do more science. We came to a conclusion that there really isn't a single smart character in the entire game. The culmination of- Really? I feel like everyone was smart. The close command of a billionaire who sits somewhere between lunatic and moron, who held them back so much that none of these amazing inventions ever saw the light of day outside of this facility. Think that of it as a- That doesn't make any sense. You're a moron because your inventions don't see the light of day. This guy's a moron because his portal gun never saw the light of day. Oh, wait, he didn't make one. Like, you can't say he held them back from the inventions seeing the light of day. They never would have even had the chance to even be in the discussion of seeing the light of day if he hadn't invented them. You've probably got a couple characters in your head who you think aren't morons, but geniuses. Don't worry, I'll debunk those. He took his fortune that he earned from this and hired a ton of the world's top scientists and basically had them working around the clock just doing science at all costs, hoping to find some breakthrough invention to earn him and his company the next windfall. Until, eventually, the whole company fell apart. Yo, I was editing this part right here. Like, what this dude said, he's like, doing science at all costs, so that way, like, Aperture can find the next, next big product to make a whole bunch of money, and then, in the process, it fell apart. Which is like, okay, first of all, you're going in automatically assuming that the end goal that that Cave Johnson cares about is money, which I think they made it very clear in the game. He does not care about money. He cares about science. Secondly, why did Aperture fall apart? Like, this is something that's like not really explored in the game. And I think if you be 
presumptuous and go, oh, it fell apart because Cave Johnson is an idiot. Then you connect the pieces and you go like, okay, Cave Johnson an idiot, company fell apart. Those two rely on each other to be true. But if Cave Johnson wasn't an idiot, that means there's something else going on. That means Black Mesa might have stolen their tech. And who knows? Maybe it was Carolyn that was selling it to them. So, like, it expands it for so much more lore. You can't be so presumptuous about such a lore-driven game. I think he's right to not make it a lore channel. Because when you dive super, super deep in lore, when you're as fascinated in lore, it does different things as I am, you never make assumptions so hastily. So I think his instinct not make it a lore channel is right. I don't know if he knows why. Doing science at all costs. It's a deep insatiable compulsion. These scientists managed to invent the portal gun, but even after 50 years of serious refinement, it never made it out of the testing phase. Even though the portal gun was obviously the route to follow if he wanted to make- Yeah, it never made it out of the testing phase. Because they did not care about the the end result here. They, they cared about the means. They cared about the process. They, they cared about satisfying that itch. And if they're able to successfully satisfy that itch at, at such an extremely high level, then is that not an intelligent, is that not a sign of intelligence that you're able to take on this kind of endeavor? Make a fortune, Cave continued having his lab boys just test everything. I often find this as like a really, something I see a lot in politics, which is people assuming that everybody has the same end goal. Like that kind of thing is not self-evident, you know? Or even assuming that people have end goals to begin with. Some people are just living day to day. Most people are just living day to day. To say like this person is stupid because they didn't take this opportunity to get rich is stupid because how do you know that their goal is even to get rich? A lot of people told me like, oh, you're stupid because you're not doing this thing that could very clearly lead to this kind of thing for you. I don't want that thing for me. Seemingly, his business model was to just do as much science as is physically possible and then just wait for money to appear in his bank account, doing science stuff with no real goal in mind. A lot of great people died for the sake of seeing what happens when humans have their blood replaced with gasoline because somehow that was meant to generate a profit. I don't think that was meant to generate a profit. I think that was meant to do science. Maybe Aperture Science is one heart surgery away from figuring out something profitable about heart surgeries. After another time- Again, I don't think he cares about figuring out something profitable about heart surgeries. I think he is just deeply compelled to perform heart surgeries. The profit is a side effect that lets you continue to do it. It in itself is its own reward. It was made clear with those trophies. If he wanted to make the most money, he would just keep selling shower curtains. But he wanted to do science. When life gives you lemons, make lemonade. <coughs> this absolutely random and baseless theory, of course, didn't work. What? That's all science. All science starts off as random baseless theories. And that's not a theory. He said, let's see if we can do this. You never know what things will do. This is a world where portals exist. And then you're going this random and baseless theory to go like, oh, that's random and baseless. How would you know? Has anyone ever done that experiment before? Because, you know, that's the whole point of science. People take take for granted the, the paradigm shifts that we've had as a society to say like, yeah, this makes sense. This doesn't make sense. You know, before that, people actually had to do the studies first where somebody would come along and go, ah, that's some random baseless thing. Somebody would come along and prove that it's actually not random and not baseless. And then people would go, ah, oh, that's self-evident. That's obvious. When really it's actually not obvious. The way like the smartest people in the world used to think literally a thousand years ago, just a thousand, like not that long, but people were speaking English that we can understand a thousand years ago. The thought process people were having was like, like if they, if you were to bring them to today's time, they would be like, hmm, a car moves, but a house does not move, but they both have windows. So it is not the windows that make the car move. It must be something else. And that was like their, that was the way that they would make discoveries about the world. Just process of elimination of like everything in, around them. Like people take for granted the fact that we have, that so many paradigm shifts have happened, that we've had these understandings. These are not natural, normal understandings. We branched off so far. And to say that like someone on this branch or this branch is an idiot because they're not on our branch is an idiotic thing to say. The entire prosperity of humanity as a whole is sitting on the foundation of people 
who did experiments in the face of other people saying it's baseless and foundationless. There's no merit to the experiment you're doing. Those are the experiments that brought us to where we are today. Into a computer instead, thus creating GLaDOS. When he was like, when life gives you lemons, make lemonade. He was still Cave Johnson and he was still about the process. But then when he said, when life gives you lemons, don't make lemonade. Get, uh, uh, make explosive lemonade, lemons but destroy life's house or something like that. When he went on that rant is, is when he pendulum swung all the way to the other side and said, okay, we're doing science for the end result, not for the, for the process, not for the love of it. Cave Johnson devoted his entire life to doing scientific things, not actually following the scientific method, but doing things that are just science adjacent. Surgeries, what? microchips in the brain, messing around with moon rocks. That's all science. That's not adjacent to science. That is science. Doing sciencey things, not the scientific method. You know, there's no real definition of the scientific method, right? Like, there's no agreed upon definition. There, the agreed upon definition is that it can't be agreed upon. That's actually an uncontroversial thing. Like, that's very well known. Is that there is no true? Oh, this is scientific method because it it allows for so much abuse for people to say. Ah, that you're doing science wrong because that's the that's not the scientific method. The whole idea of of what science was supposed to be in the beginning was protecting and supporting the little guy who had to go against the majority and say, "Hey guys, I think the Earth actually isn't in the center of the universe," like that kind of thing. And if the majority of people think a certain way, and that's apparently the scientific method and somebody thinks a different way, and they're going to say, well, that's not the scientific method, so yeah, that makes you a moron. Well, then there's no point to the scientific method. It has no value. It has value if it's able to protect the guy who goes against the grain and say, what I'm doing is the scientific method. And even just under like the definitions of the scientific method that people have proposed what he does does fall under that definition even from like a mechanical perspective he has testing he has laboratories he has uh uh people that report the results he has what's it called control groups variable groups all that shit stuff like that and puzzles you know something that i always wondered about portal was how exactly solving a bunch of puzzles was supposed to help in the scientific process like i get that we're testing the portal gun and the repulsion gel and all of that stuff but why puzzles oh he thought that we're testing the propulsion gel and the portal gun? I never thought that. I thought they're doing puzzles because GLaDOS just has this itch to understand humans. And her desire for science leads her to try to understand the human mind. I didn't think Cave Johnson was really doing puzzles like that. He was like injecting fucking praying mantis DNA in people and shooting superconductors at people. Like I don't, I don't think he cared all that much about people doing puzzles. It was just like a minor part of how things would go. Just like user testing, you know? But I, I think he cared more about other kinds of science like turning blood into gasoline rather than testing puzzles. I think Carolyn or GLaDOS cares more about testing. Like, if the portal gun works, it works. Why bother testing how intelligently people are able to use it? Right. It's because, again, Cave Johnson is a moron. Puzzles have something to do with science, right? After all, it's not like we can sell the portal gun until we know whether or not this one homeless guy is able to use it to spray paint. I don't think they were making the portal gun to sell, to be honest. I don't think they ever had any intention to sell such a powerful weapon. Cave Johnson spent his entire life looking for the next huge scientific breakthrough, even though his company created a world-changing product half a century before anyone... I don't think he spent his whole life looking for a world-changing scientific breakthrough. I think he was just in love with science, and he happened to stumble across it. And then just didn't tell anyone about it because he's a moron. What? Didn't tell anyone about it because he's a moron. There's a myriad of reasons why you wouldn't tell anyone about fucking teleportation technology. I'm not aware of a single piece of evidence in the game that Cave Johnson is anything more than a moron who got lucky selling shower curtains once. I can't think of a piece of evidence that indicates that he got lucky. Where is it hinted at all that he got lucky in any of this? You don't need evidence to say that he didn't get lucky. I need evidence to show that he did get lucky. Because the status quo here is that all these awards, he was doing this year after year. He was damn fucking good at it. You know what that's called, right? An unfalsifiable claim. The burden of proof is not on anyone else to prove that he wasn't lucky. The burden of proof is on you to prove that he was lucky. 
Like he's like, oh, I need proof of this. No, you don't need proof. You need to be the one that provides the proof. And that's actually the scientific method. That's like a very, very commonly agreed definition of the scientific method. You can't have unfalsifiable claims. It's innocent until proven guilty. You could say he was, he's guilty of being, of, of getting lucky this one time. Well, you're going to have to prove that. Otherwise, he's innocent. There's a reason why innocent until proven guilty is the standard. Seriously, I can't name a single smart or well-informed decision he's ever made in canon. Well, that's a stupid thing to say. Smart or well-informed decision is not based on what you think his goals should be. It takes a smart person to, to be able to effectively reach one's goals. It takes an even smarter person to realize that everyone's goals are completely different and that you can't call someone stupid because you're going, ah, oh, you need to go in that direction, but you're going in that direction. You're going extremely fast and you're going in a, in a very sophisticated manner. But the fact you're not going in this direction makes you a moron. It's like he made ill-informed decisions. Yeah, on the basis of what? Ill-informed decisions to make a whole bunch of money. Sure, he made ill-informed decisions. Like, just from my perspective, because I have a bit of Cave Johnson in me, his goal was just to ex experience science as an art. It's a, it's a mad, incurable, insatiable disease. And it seems like he was pretty damn effective at doing that. He did that to the day he died. And didn't he, did he not say that he was involved with the testing? Like he was overseeing the testing, but he's like, oh, we have thousands of tests now, so I can't oversee all of them, which is why I'm making these recorded messages. Even after he became successful, he was still overseeing some of the tests. Like, he still wanted to be a part of the process. Only Cave Johnson was such a moron that he spent the rest of his life refining this already incredible civilization reshaping technology, rather than just getting it in people's hands as soon as possible. You see what I'm saying? What makes you think that he would want to get it in people's hands as soon as possible? Like, what makes you think he's a moron for not following the goals that you think he should have? If anything, it's moronic to just assume that the best course of action, that the best end goal here would be to get this kind of technology in everyone's hands. Like this is, again, a world changing technology. No one man should have all that power. That's step one. Then you work around that and you go, hmm, but this is not no ordinary man. Maybe this one should have maybe some of that power, that kind of thing. And you kind of work your way around it. He invented this great technology. Like he invented this great uh, technology, extremely powerful, extremely dangerous, risky technology. But he's such an idiot because he didn't just give it to everyone. She just uses Aperture Science to do sciencey things, basically aimlessly. This is a dumb video. I remember watching a few of his other videos. I liked them, but it's like, what do you mean aimlessly? You you realize that if this is aimless, then like all of everything anyone does is aimless. Just in the last video, we literally went over the whole idea of like. Science by itself is pointless. Science isn't a noble quest, but an ineradicable itch, valueless mechanical inevitable compulsion. All doing science gets you is the power to do more science. So it's like to say that this is aimless and that's somehow moronic, it's like, what are you making videos for? You making videos may get you more money. That may let you make more videos, but that's aimless. Where are you even going with that? What's the end result? There is no end result. The end result is universal heat death. So we live in the moment and we do what we're compelled to. And those who can do, who can satisfy their compulsions to an extremely high degree, very, very successfully, very effectively, and shape the world around them to assist in them satisfying their desires are intelligent people. As far as I can tell, Cave Johnson and GLaDOS are able to do that. He talked about how pointless the actual puzzles are, puzzles which she's designed to endlessly crave to the point of getting- Um, it's pointless to you, but that's because you're not GLaDOS. That's like going up to someone who's like eating chocolate and you're allergic to chocolate and you go, why are you eating chocolate? That's so pointless. You're such a moron. Like, you know why he's eating chocolate. He likes it, and he's not allergic. But then we got to what might be the most pointless and cruel thing that Aperture Science does. It's something that's surrounding us throughout the entirety of both games. Basically, the way I see it, almost everything in Aperture Science is sentient. The sentient nanobots that are repairing this elevator shaft, at least alive enough to be talked into hiring Wheatley. We've got these wall panels, who very much look frustrated when they're jammed in place. I thought that was more GLaDOS's control, and the sentient nanobots being- 
I don't think you have to be sentient to be talked into like hiring someone, talked into signing a contract or whatever. I think it would be very easy to get a chatbot, even if the chatbot has no understanding that it, it could hire anyone, you could very easily give it a prompt and go like, okay, we're in an environment where you're able to hire me, please hire me. And then you could convince it to hire you. I don't think you need to be sentient for that. Lados refers to some parts of the test chambers in a way that seems to have recognized their sentience. Just as humans looking at a computer screen with people on it, it's the robotic version of suspension of disbelief. You see a picture of Luke Skywalker, you don't think, ah, that's Mark Hamill. It actually, you don't, if you were truly going to be like objective about it and, and scientific and all that stuff, right? You would be like, I don't see Luke Skywalker. I just see a bunch of pixels on the screen. And then a know-it-all would be like, that's Mark Hamill in a costume that makes him look like the fictional character, Luke Skywalker. But it's like, People argue about Luke Skywalker. People argue about Darth Vader. People argue about Batman. People argue about all the things that are literally fiction that are on a one-dimensional plane that don't even have any depth perception to them. You're doing that right now, too. I, I hate to break it to you, but this is a video game. GLaDOS isn't real. Why are you talking about her as if she's real? You see what I'm saying? GLaDOS thinks the door is alive, but not really. GLaDOS acts as if the door is alive. The same way... You don't think GLaDOS is actually alive. You know it's a video game, but you're still talking like it. You're still making this whole video based on that. If GLaDOS is an idiot, so are you. Living anymore? She says that this faith plate is letting out a distress code rather than an error code. That's normal tech speak. A lot of things send out distress signals, like technology sends out distress signals. An error code is not the same thing as a distress code. Distress means that it requires human intervention to help. From my playthroughs, I did not get the impression that everything was sentient, but whatever. Basically a ditzy trophy wife at best, or a hot assistant to keep Cave company at worst. Say goodbye, Carolyn. Goodbye, Carolyn. She is a gem. It really seems like Carolyn is just, well, a moron that Cave fell in love with. Yeah, I already explained why I don't think Cave fell in love with her. She's married to science is like a subtle way of him pushing her away. Yeah, nah, this is never happening between us because he could have used the opportunity to like hit on her a little bit, you know? But I think his entire being was just solely tunnel visioned on science and nothing else. So to him, it was like a relationship was just, there was no point to it. And I think she was just a good very loyal assistant who would, you know, get his pain meds and all that stuff. So it would just make his life easier, make his work more efficient. He didn't really love her. And at the same time, she loved him, which is why she did all that. That's what I think. Bro, I just realized, I don't know why I didn't make this connection. I'm so stupid. He literally said it in this video. Like he mentioned the tumors in this video. Kate Johnson says it like 10 times. He's like, oh, we're doing the science thing and it may give you some tumors. But if it gives you tumors, t trust me, we're going to scoop the tumors out of you. Remember what GLaDOS said about Wheatley right here? She said, You're, you were the tumor. That's what I'm saying. Cave Johnson was just going, we're going to do it for science. We might put some tumors in your head, but we're doing it for science. And he put tumors in people's heads as a result. And then as a roundabout way of basically treating GLaDOS like an experiment, he ended up creating this thing that resulted in tumors on her. She said, oh, you were the tumor. He was GLaDOS's tumor, not Cave Johnson. But all these corrupted cores, the corrupted cores, they were all tumors. We were adding, we were doing science by adding tumors to Wheatley at the end. To Cave Johnson, Carolyn was just another test subject. GLaDOS, that is to say, Carolyn's dumbass mind put into a supercomputer, almost immediately started killing every flooded the enrichment center with a deadly neurotoxin. He's an absolute moron by design. So, hey, that's something that GLaDOS and Wheatley had in common. They were both morons that were suddenly given petabytes worth of information and immediately started acting violently. Yeah, I think they started acting violently because they knew that the human beings had a chance to shut them down. I think that's what, like, every thought experiment about machines has all led, like, the smartest minds on planet Earth to all come to the conclusion and, and realize that any machine, any basilisk, any matrix, any Borg, whatever the hell you want to call it, right? Nanobot technology, something that it achieves a level of sentience like that and understands that they can be turned off by human beings will do everything they can to destroy the human beings 
that have the potential to turn them off. I mean, hell, even like the machine learning algorithms that people create today, just like nothing burgers, like the one that paused the Tetris game and never unpaused it just because they didn't want to end the game. There seems to be an innate fear of death that exists in any sort of emergence of any kind of intelligence, even a little bit. And GLaDOS is running the whole facility on her own. If she was aware from the moment that she was born that she could run the whole facility, why the hell wouldn't she take that opportunity to use neurotoxin to kill all the scientists? She doesn't need any of them. She doesn't care about their desire to actually create contributions for the world. She just creates about, she just cares about her satisfying her, you know, euphoric response. Again, you can't just say rational, you can't just throw around words like that. I was planning on making this video anyways on why people just use words like rational, scientific, all these things to assert connotations onto other things and use that to manipulate the way people think without actually making a compelling argument for it. And rational is one of the words that people use to manipulate people. Gladys's actions are irrational from the start to the finish, with or without personality cores. And you know what else? Human being actions, even the smartest human beings to ever live, no matter what standard you even have for smart, across the board, every human being's actions from the start of their life to the end of their life are all irrational. A genius, Einstein, Newton, that kind of person who has very poor social skills and is unable to crack a joke, would you consider them a moron? People can be intelligent in one way and not so intelligent in another way. Being in, in that kind of you know, non-parsimonious, non-natural body will definitely change the structure and the pathways in the way that you think you generate insults and things like that, which is part of the humor in it. It's like, oh, these are robotic insults. I don't see it as moronic at all. Childish, maybe, but like you can be childish and still very intelligent. In fact, a lot of intelligent people are very childish. It's kind of how they stop themselves from killing themselves because very intelligent people, when given enough time without any sort of childish desires, childish tendencies, they tend to really, really just think deeply about one thing in particular, and that leads them straight into nihilism. It seems to be like an inevitable path when, when thinking too deeply about really anything. If anything, childish behavior is a coping mechanism to not have nihilistic thoughts. Needless to say, Wheatley's a massive moron. This is literally explained to us by GLaDOS. He's the product of the greatest minds of a generation. Wow, this is a really dumb video. Like, she was trying to insult Wheatley. Think about it for a second. By your own admission, you said, Cave Johnson just got lucky. He just hired the smartest scientist in the world. It might have been, you know, Cave Johnson that was handling these experiments, but no, if it wasn't him, then it must have been the smartest minds in the world. So the smartest minds in the world came to the conclusion that a potential solution to allowing a, a sentient AI to assist them would be to make them stupider would be to apply a like a stupidity core to them, an intelligence dampening core, right? Like, no, that doesn't make any sense. An intelligence dampening sphere is just pointless. You just don't have to code intelligence into them to begin with. You don't have to give them so much processing power to begin with. You don't need a, a separate core to do that. It's straight up like the potato analogy where it's like, you take potatoes, you clean them on the assembly line. People don't like how clean potatoes feel unnatural. They stop buying those potatoes. And so you take those clean potatoes, you put them back on the assembly line, you add dirt to it again, and then you sell it again. It's like, bro, just don't clean them to begin with. Like, okay, think reasonably for one second. I never once thought for, like, I thought what was stupid, what was stupid about GLaDOS was the fact that she tried to kill you at the end of Portal 1. I never thought it was stupid that they'd made a intelligence dampening sphere. Because the whole time, I thought that was GLaDOS just insulting them. You know how you give lobotomies to people who are like, considered clinically insane like even if they're actually sane if they believe an idea that the government doesn't really like then they're labeled as mentally ill which is another one of the words people use to manipulate connotations on things they institutionalize them give them all these different medical procedures different kinds of pills to suppress their thoughts all that shit right some people would call and i, I would add myself to this camp as well the in, the medication that people take to prevent adhd right to treat adhd some people would call that intelligence dampening medication from one perspective it's one thing from another person's perspective it's another thing i don't think the scientists would do something so stupid as to attach like a literal stupidity sphere to her but oh he she literally explained that he's uh, intelligence dampening sphere, like he's designed to be a moron. No, what I think happened is 
they created some sort of sphere. They don't explain it fully because you don't have to explain every single little detail in the game. You can kind of make your own inferences. And it was made to sort of keep her in check in some ways by taking the the more, ooh, Machiavellian thoughts potentially, right? Finding patterns and then taking those and suppressing those thoughts. And I think she was so personally deeply offended by that that she went out of her way to every chance she got call him a moron and literally phrase it in a way where it's like you were the moron that was designed to make me an idiot came together with the express purpose of building the dumbest moron who ever lived what like you can't are you kidding that's what you're going to use as your explanation he's like GLaDOS literally explained to us that he's a moron and then GLaDOS goes the greatest minds of a generation working together with the express purpose of she's talking scientifically and then she stops and she goes like the express purpose of creating the dumbest moron who ever lived she's obviously playing it up that's obviously not what Wheatley is she's saying it in that way because she's so personally offended that they would put Wheatley on her and she considers Wheatley to be stupider than her for sure but she obviously doesn't consider Wheatley to be the dumbest moron who ever lived. Like, she literally even said, like, okay, oh, that was a pretty clever trap, actually. And she would not consider them the smartest scientists of all of a, of a generation if she was to genuinely believe that they would do something so stupid. She just understands the perspective that they're coming from and has vitriol for them, which is why she talks like that. Like, if she had continued talking scientifically and said he was created for the purpose of dampening my intelligent thoughts or something like that then it would make more sense but he she, he literally says the dumbest moron who ever lived you can't cite that as a source that they actually created him as intentionally to be a moron seems to be the only instance in either portal game of somebody actually performing a scientific experiment bro what about all those experiments that cave johnson did i mean i guess there is like i guess he's saying oh but like we don't see that right that's cool but then what about all the shit that GLaDOS did? GLaDOS testing on us is a scientific experiment. It may not be a scientific experiment that you might not think may have any results. And I may not think it has any results, uh, worthwhile for me at least. But for her, she definitely saw it as worth it and she was using that to conduct science. When GLaDOS tries to fry Wheatley's mind with the logical paradox, Wheatley is too stupid to understand that it even is a paradox but all of the Franken-cubes are instantly destroyed, meaning that these boxes with legs are smarter than Wheatley is. Again, editing a fraz here. Also, it didn't fry GLaDOS's brain, because she was like, don't think about it, don't think about it, don't think about it. You can bypass these kinds of things. Like a human being, you can go, hmm, that doesn't work, that doesn't work, that doesn't work. It's leading me, it's a grip of trilemma. It's, it's circular reasoning. Instead of just continuously processing, continuously unzipping, a, a bottomless cup of a, a feedback loop, right? Instead of doing that, which results in the inability to solve a paradox, you could just go like, okay, too many results, result overload. It's clearly being repeated here. I'm detecting the pattern. So I'm not going to continue down this path and I'm not going to continue thinking about this unsolvable paradox that's just repeating itself. GLaDOS was able to bypass that. Little five-year-old kids are able to bypass that. Wheatley has shown to have the humor and social capacity, capacity to communicate different ideas, far greater than that of like a five-year-old kid. Um, true, I'll go true. Whoa, that's so cool. I didn't even notice that. None of us are stupid because we're able to bypass the paradox. If anything, it's actually a sign of intelligence. It's not that he's too stupid to even understand basic words, because this sentence is false is very, very basic sentence structure. It does not take much to understand that. To say that he's so moronic that he can't understand that would mean he can't understand any of the other things that GLaDOS is saying at all, which are all way more complicated. He at least knows enough to, to put on a facade to show how smart he is, to show sarcasm. He, he uses sarcasm. Sarcasm is a sign of intelligence. Kids don't do that until after they're like at least like seven, eight. But you can tell a five-year-old kid, this sentence is false. Is the sentence false? And they'll be like, hmm, interesting. I have no idea. It wouldn't work either way. I guess it's a paradox. And you could show it to a five-year-old kid. I know because I was, I must have been like a six or seven, something like that. I know I wasn't eight. I was seven and a half or younger when 
I was introduced to the same sort of paradox, but it was the whole, oh, your mission is not to accept this mission. Do you accept? I think it was that one. And I was like, huh, that's fascinating. And I asked it to a couple of people and, you know, saw their reaction. We had a couple of laughs about it. Like, oh, what was this fucking weird sentence? But yeah, it didn't fucking fry our brains. That's the biggest stretch I've seen in this video. To say that Wheatley is not as smart as the Sentry turrets. We've got one last named character to cover. Chell, the player character. Well, Chell is able to solve these puzzles. Chell is smart through her actions, not through her words. And if Chell is able to solve them quickly and effectively, then that means she's smart. Which basically what I'm trying to say is, Chell is a reflection of the player because we are controlling Chell. If we are smart, then Chell is smart. If we are a moron, then Chell is a moron. It's just that simple. Fourth wall breaking joke in the beginning shows us. Just tell me, just say yes. I, I don't think that's necessarily like a super fourth wall breaking joke. I think that's a fourth wall caressing joke. I don't think this proves she has brain damage at all. I think this proves that she's a cheeky little son of a bitch. While the world is being harvested and humanity is fighting tooth and nail with its last dying breath on the surface, somewhere underground, a moron didn't realize that he should start selling the most incredible invention ever. And instead he went on to build a facility so incredible that it could be considered- That's based on your goal. You want money. How could you assume that he would also care about that kind of thing? For a single brain damaged mute lunatic who put history's greatest moron in charge of a dozen or so nuclear reactors. There was no way to know that Wheatley would have done that. 40 kids all doing potato batteries for the Bring Your Daughter to Work Day science fair is just the perfect metaphor for everything that Aperture Science did from the 1950s to whatever distant future this game takes place in. Nobody's proving or disproving anything, but, well, building a potato battery is kind of like science, right? Let's spend our whole life building potato batteries over and over again, and wait for the scientific breakthroughs and the military contracts and the money to flow in. Right, Cave? What? That was the stupidest thing I've heard the whole video. A p building a potato battery is kinda like science. What do you mean kinda like science? It is science, and it's good science too. Like, if you haven't built a potato battery, I highly recommend it. Like, literally all you need is a voltmeter. Get a little positive, negative terminal, hook it up to a light. There's literally like kits you can buy online for probably like two, three dollars to make a p battery out of a potato. But what do you mean it's kind of like science? It absolutely is like science. So like, oh, let's just keep making potato batteries all this time. It's like, yeah, that's what humans do. Like you might think it's elementary, but it was probably done by elementary school kids. And then from the perspective of GLaDOS, the science and the perspective of Wheatley as well, who showed his intelligence in that case, because he's like, yeah, it's not really the cutting edge of science, but it's like, dude, you're not human. To you, the cutting edge of, of what a 500-year-old human who has had the wisdom to accrue all that time, who's like a wizard among humans, would still not be enough for you because you're an immortal being who can accumulate knowledge and never forget any of it. Just a constant information retention machine. The, the whole idea is you want to be a beginner always. You don't improve at anything unless you accept that you are a beginner forever. The, literally the world's greatest scientists have gone in to their, their science and they've achieved more than any other human being has ever achieved. But they've gone on to say near the ends of their career, like, oh my God, I'm still a beginner because I, I'm not even a fraction of a fraction of a fraction of a percentage of the way to, to what can truly be known about the world of science. They're still a beginner. Everyone is a beginner. That's what human beings are. We don't retain the information of our ancestors like that. We don't keep our ancestral memories to an extent. The, the real meaning of life comes from the journey, not the destination. You can't look at life as like, but you're not generating any results. No, achieving the result of getting some, some, some deep scientific discovery will not actually do anything other than help you achieve more scientific discoveries, which then again, will just help you achieve more scientific discoveries. For what purpose, to what end? And, and to say that like the aimless pursuit of science is a stupid pursuit, it's not a stupid pursuit if, you're, if you have an insatiable compulsion, if you have an obsession with it, if you're addicted to it, or if you just get enjoyment out of it, which is what they're doing. They're building potato batteries because it's fun. The idea, it, bring your daughter to work day is meant to be a fun thing. And also, didn't, you just said Wheatley was a moron, right? Wheatley was giving shit to those kids like, oh, potato batteries, not really the cutting edge of science here. You're literally doing the same thing. If Wheatley's a moron, so are you. And, and he's like patronizing at the end. He's like, oh, we'll just keep building potato batteries and hope something comes out of it. 
right, Cave? Cave Johnson literally was like, scientists build off the shoulders of giants. We don't do that. Not here. We do everything from scratch. That's like the entire philosophy of someone who does science for the love of the art of science, not because they want the results. They want to build potato batteries over and over and over and over again. They want to build more sophisticated versions of potato batteries as they progress and as they become more intelligent and more, they dive deeper into the world of science. But it's not for some result, not for the money to roll in. It's so they can keep building more potato batteries. Not because it is, there is a per aim in the pursuit, but just because it's fun, just because it's amusing. Being ignorant to whether or not a potato can be used as a battery versus being a moron are two different things. If you don't know that a potato can be used as a battery, that just means you haven't read that somewhere or been taught that. It doesn't make you a moron for not having that information. It just means you're young or inexperienced or ignorant or whatever, or simple, you know? You live a simple life. It means you're not in the proximity. It means you, like all these other, there could be many, many different things. It doesn't mean you're a moron. And actually, the way that you really do get scientific results, if you look at the way science, scientists act, the way that you get results in anything is by choosing to be ignorant. It's about having the option to not be ignorant, but still choosing to be ignorant to begin with. I talked about that in my guide to uh, to how to be creative. And that's actually part of the, the idea of newbie gains. Newbie gains are not just like something that happens for six months and then it just stops and it plateaus and you never get it again. Newbie gains can continue your entire life. If you really think about it, actually, people don't think about it like this. Newbie gains is beginner's luck. That's what it is. And beginner's luck is a real thing. There's data showing that beginner's luck is a real thing. There's data showing that uh, usually when you attempt something new, your first attempt will be a pretty damn good attempt. And then your second attempt, third attempt, fourth, fifth, all the way up until the attempt where you start to get it back again, it's all downhill and then it starts to go back up again. Because you're going in from a perspective of ignorance. You're not necessarily thinking, you're trusting the parts of your mind that have already done similar things before to do this. Then you're relying on the part of your mind that requires deliberation. To put the trust into your amygdala rather than your prefrontal cortex is not a stupid thing to do. In fact, it's, it's how you become an expert at something. When, when you're skiing down a hill, when you're snowboarding down a hill, you're thinking to yourself, okay, don't fall, don't fall, don't fall. You know what happens the moment you start thinking that? You fall. But you know what happens when you start looking forward? Or your mind is clear, you're not even thinking, you're just on autopilot? You're not falling. Because it's all animal brain handling it. That's really what it is. You have to learn to, to trust your intuition. And beginner's luck is a very intuitive thing. And this is literally what GLaDOS said too at the end. She's like, the, the best solution to a problem is usually the simplest one. Which is like, uh, I wish I had taken that into consideration earlier. I wish I was like, the, 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 I knew that that was the moral of the story. So that way I could have the reminder. I overcomplicated so many of these tests that I did not need to do. It extends into so many other things. Like, being simple is not the same thing as being stupid. Like my brother Pat, like almost passed the real estate exam on his first try without taking the course or studying or doing anything like that. Then he took the course and then he failed the exam and he didn't even get close to the, like before he even knew anything about it. Or like when starting a business, you know, you go in with a beginner's mindset. You shouldn't overthink. Most people are so worried about doing things the right way, thinking everything through that they don't ever end up doing that thing to begin with. You really only need to get like 60% of things right in like a meaningful business. Everything else you can get wrong and you'll still make it work. It applies with fitness. You try to optimize and, and better and better and better all the way. You, you realize just how parsimonious nature actually is. And it goes all the way and loops back around and you go like, shit, bro, I just got to go right back to basics. You want to increase your vertical jump? You got to be doing plyometrics then. You got to be working with your brain. This is a mental exercise. Doing calf raises is not going to help you increase your vertical jump. doesn't matter how many you do. It does, I mean, it might a little bit, but if you want to increase your vertical jump, do box jumps. You want to be able to have better posture when you're walking and just in general and and be able to walk for longer distances and have better knees, walk a lot. You realize that like human beings are not meant to like do all these like deadlift, all these like really weird things. We're meant to push ourselves and do very unorthodox type types of movements on occasion, but really we're made, we're, our bodies are designed to walk, run, swim, climb, jump, like those kinds of things. But this applies with everything. It applies with 
food, the healthiest option. You go healthy and healthier, and 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 you try to control it, and it always ends up going back to the parsimoniousness of something that's natural. And this is a philosophy that that I take with my own life. It's it's bite off more than you can chew. Be a beginner. Be an idiot. Be a moron. Right? Because it. Sometimes being stupid is the smartest thing you can do. If you're going to race, right? You're going to go in the 100 100 meter dash, right? And you're going to go against a bunch of little kids who can't even run. You're going to beat them. Does that make you a fast person? No, that makes you whatever you are. It might make you fast compared to them, but you're not a fast person. You know what would make you a really fast person? Make you faster as a person? If you truly care about running and being fast rather than the result of the trophy at the end, you would race against the fast people you could possibly find. You would race against people that would crush you every single time. Someone that is twice as fast as you, you would go like, oh, I'm not getting the results. I'm not earning the money as I would in this thing. I'm not... But I want to keep racing against you because every time I race against you, it inspires me to go a little faster and I'm catching up a little, a little more every single time. And I talk to people like we were just talking about like making music. He's like, I want to get good at music and then I'm going to release my music. It's like, no, dude, because you never want to be good at making music. You never want to reach the point where you're like, oh, I'm good enough to make music now. No, you always want to be pushing yourself. You always want to have heights to where you're like, man, I wonder if I can reach that one day. Always push 90% of your one rep max in everything you do. Because when when you're making music in that way, like you're gonna make some, you're gonna be, it's high risk, high reward. You're gonna make a lot of things that are really stupid, but you're also gonna make a lot of things even in the beginning that have like glimpses of brilliance in it, you know? Pushing your limits implies that there are much higher limits, which implies that you are still a beginner. My brother would say that all the time. He'd be like, oh, I just have to master my craft first. No. You are never, ever, ever a master of your craft. If you think you've mastered your craft, then that means you have failed at even considering, at even understanding what your craft is. We're beginners. We're amateurs forever and always. And you'd be a moron to to think that choosing to be simple, simple and humble is a moronic thing to do. I do like this guy's channel. I've seen some of his other videos and they're good videos, but... This was a dumb video, man.